I filmed content with Glaive on the first day of the Blast World Finals, but I really think he had no clue that this was coming. I, I, I really don't think so. And uh, I think, and I remember like two days before we were like at go-karts and I saw Glaive there watching, um, there was like a motorcycle race happening. And we're like, yo, you're going to go to go-karts. He's like, oh, you can do go-karts here. That's cool. Well, I can't do that because I only have 48 hours to find teammates. And I was just like, <laughs> holy shit, like that's so real. Best esports odds. VIP program and a variety of bonuses. Fast and easy withdrawals. Bet on every possible CSGO matching tournament. As well as any other esports game. Only on 22 Bet. Are you tired of your boring old skins and looking for beautiful new ones? Trade.gg is your place to go for easy and secure trades within seconds. Simply pick and choose whatever item you want to trade from Trade.it's huge inventory. Verify the trade on Steam and you're ready. With the lowest fees in the market and a beautiful, easy to use UI, Trade.it also offers you the option to instantly sell your items for cash. We accept a wide variety of payment methods. Trade.gg is the go-to place whenever you want to try out fancy new skins. Start trading today at Trade.it.gg. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Counter-Strike fans around the globe, welcome back to another episode of HL TV Confirmed. Quick shout out to the sponsors, 22 Better Remember to Gamble Sponsor is Steel Series. They've got some fucking gear. You want to get yourself a mouse, a keyboard, a mouse pad, all that stuff, they've fucking got it. And uh, of course, Trader.gg in the marketplace with some skins, you know where to go. Tonight's episode, uh, I have brought along with me Prof. Uh, we kicked out Striker. Prof, you weren't here last week. What happened? Uh, there's no space. That's it. I, I was just at the home. <laughs> just you the, space. You, there's no, no space. space for your own show. That is true. That is true. I was the I was the bigger man. It was about, I was like you, you set know, yourself out immediately. I, was you like, didn't even... I didn't do the show before that. And I'm like, Striker, can you can I do this one? You know, since I didn't do the last one. He's like, No, I wanna be it's it's gonna be great, it's gonna be liquid, you know. I wanna be on the show, you can go fuck yourself. So I'm like, Okay, striker, ego yeah. much, you know, he has a cat, he has a girlfriend, and Two just cats. like starts fucking, you know, pussy everywhere and now he's like, like, you know. Changing the game. surrounded by pussy. Used to be fucking <laughs> friends, and now it's all about you know the the airtime and then the FaceTime. So I'm like, okay, so, and uh, then I got I got this one. I guess okay. I should be happy with this. That. Show's gotten wild since the last time I'm on. We're five <laughs> minutes in, and there's been so much pussy conversation. I this is things have changed. Well, why do you think you're here, Jason? Someone who knows <laughs> an awful lot about pussy. That's why we brought you and Lorna yeah. tonight. The both of you just drenched in it. Uh, no, but look, uh, <laughs> we. We're here to talk about Counter Strike, obviously. Uh, and look, we, I, I did did bring uh, the two of you on, two lovely gentlemen, to uh, help get through this evening's episode. And you guys like to talk a lot, which is great because I'm a little bit jet lagged, and uh, you you can help fill the void this evening. Now, Jason, I wanted to ask about the headwear. Is it cold inside your house? <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, it's did my you build Thor, that? It's my Thorn impression. Ah, okay. yeah. I don't oh, yeah. have what the, do you have, jackets in the attic. Yeah, I don't really have a fluffy jacket to throw on, but I can I can do the beanie. It's just comfortable, man. I'm you know. No, I like just, it. Yeah, it's comfy. No, I think it's it. Looks Jason, good. we just... already know. You know what I mean. You can take it off. <laughs> 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 no, I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. And are you wearing your bit, bit of Volvo merch as well, there, Jason? I am. Are you wearing your little I bit am. of Volvo merch? Oh I my am. god, it's a comfy. Yeah, it's a comfy. Look at these guys, bro. Look at these guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were invited to match <laughs> it. <laughs> 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 this is, is, headquarters? This no. is the championship team at the uh, the play test team north team north which was our team uh, i'm also wearing the team you were in the pullover or the hoodie 
I'm doing the I'm doing the pull the crew right, neck I've is gone, what we uh, call it. Yeah, crew you, neck, you, sorry. Yeah. You've gone I've, for the hoodie. I've got the hoodie on, yeah. So we, we've covered all bases. But Launders, what are you wearing this evening? Oh, yeah. Okay, tomorrow we're actually launching. <laughs> <laughs> no, on, the, on the 21st, boxermovement.club. You can go there right now, leave your email, get a password, and we have remade the store. We're going to have a lot of new stuff released. So I'll get that plug out of the way, boxermovement.club. And, yes, this is from the store. Be wow. the best-dressed movement player uh, on HLTV confirms chat, okay? Is that first? Is it still possible in CS2 to have good movement? That's a great segue, actually. And I think <laughs> I think it I think it 90% is. I would say it's 90% is. Okay. So things are changing by the day. Like um for the better. They, I don't know how much you actually want to jump into this or if you <laughs> no, we might as well. We'll go everywhere tonight. Okay, I would say it's not like a pussy. So we're, we're, we're already we're already we're already deep. Where are yeah. we ending though? Yeah. They both made changes that have impressed me in the sense of like I think it, it was stuff that they didn't totally understand, but they still fixed it, and then or they didn't understand like the value of it, but they still changed it, and then they've also accidentally reverted stuff, you know, similar to like how the you know the butterfly knife animation ha got uh you, the, it, it was cancelable and now it's not and now it's back, so stuff is getting broken and fixed throughout these last few months. So I would say movement's like 90%. A lot of the stuff that's remaining is actually like clip brushes and things on maps. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're seeing these updates that are like five maps have all got like clip brushes removed. And that actually will make a really big difference for uh, how the game is going to feel compared to CSGO. But what's your what's your feeling like what's your feeling i don't know Do you feel I like it's closer i haven't had a chance to play a lot right like when i've been in, in Oz for the last couple of months i didn't have access to a pc i just have my laptop and i didn't want to play fucking 70 to 80 ping anyway from perth to sydney servers so i just thought fuck it uh with all these updates happening i kind of just sat back and watched it all unfold and was just reading comments so i played a little bit today just running around some deathmatch i'm gonna play a little bit again tomorrow but after christmas i'll spend a bit more time but all in all i i can't really give a fair critique at the moment of of the game i'd have to sit and wait and really uh put in some hours before i'd sit here and say one way or another so that's why you know i'm interested in the opinions i know jason he's been having some uh, good run-ins with cheaters over there in north america he's been having a great time i i, I read yeah. the comments on the forums and i kind of take them sometimes with a little bit of grain of salt sometimes a little bit seriously because more threads are popping up oh this is good or this is bad but it's the same thing like it's everyone has having different experiences out there I would love to hear more from the pros and how they're feeling because they just, they, I know that they're busy just grinding the game and trying to, you know, make sure that they can perform at a top level. But I would, they're the ones who are playing it, I guess, in the best circumstances of land. So maybe yeah. that's not even what most of us are experiencing, right? Because most of us are playing at home on higher ping and maybe on some shittier rigs. Black Comp and CSGO was got really good. People didn't really appreciate it, but like you could have, you could viably play with a teammate who had, a, there was a KZ player from Europe who played. I am one season on ESEA on like a hundred ping and they won the whole season and he didn't even have that much comp experience. And I just remember thinking like, wow, like hundred ping being viable in modern gaming is something that we take for granted for sure. And in CS2, they definitely tested everything online and then shipped it and then have tried to fix the online stuff after the fact. And I think that shows obviously, but I, I I'm sure you've asked every pro what they thought. And when I was asking him at the blast world final, I pretty much asked everybody. Most of them had, I would say it was like, if it was a Steam review, I would say it was honestly overwhelmingly positive. But okay. again, that's the LAN and yeah. the LAN environment in terms of how I answers. remember we played, we played like a little like um, casual exhibition on LAN at Pro League against like, we did like the talent versus production staff versus like League Ops and, and oh, one yeah, other team. Yeah. And the game feels, I mean, as everyone has already said and all the pros have said, it feels like 10 times better on LAN than it does online. But I know like when, when it first came out, playing with like 60 ping in NA, if you were on like the, a bad server for you, just felt like garbage. And, and it's gotten so much better since then. So they've done they've done a really good job of improving that. Even, even in CSGO, like most of the games I played in CSGO were with like Europeans. I was playing in like European mm -hmm. matchmaking and that felt fine on like 100, 110, 115 ping as Launders was just saying. And CS2 doesn't feel as good uh, playing across across the ocean, uh, but it's it's again it's it's getting better. Like everything's in the in the right direction. It feels in terms of getting fixed outside of potentially the the cheating issues. Yeah, you know? well, you you and Connor play a lot over with the Europeans, or at least you did. I haven't seen you around. Well, I haven't been around so much. Like yeah, you haven't, you haven't been around yeah. too much. Yeah, Connor's yeah, been yeah. gone too. Connor was left for like a month, so I've just I've been grinding NA Premier on my own, like solo. Playing with a player and not playing by yourself, okay? <laughs> <laughs> What's, What's your that? rating? 
Uh, I'm at like 21k, 22k, somewhere in there, like 21,500. You should just go in and inactive and then play one game and then get back 30k. I, I've heard, <laughs> I've heard that people have gone inactive, lose the rank, and then like win one game and they get 8k elo back. And I'm just that like, what the fuck? That, That's that so messed up. Me. Oh, good for you guys. I'm gonna have to but, test. I've, I've lost my rank, but look, look I, buds. Yeah. What's up, Jason? No, I was just going to say I my next evolution I, I'm just going to start playing face it. I think I could make FPL and NA. I think okay. if I that's that that might be a goal of mine for 2024 is, is make FPL and NA. That's a nice goal. You can play with yeah. Steel. You know, he's he's making some comebacks as well. You I watch his it. stream all the time, bro. He's 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 sweet. I love Steel. All right, cool. Well, he's Canadian and uh you yeah. know, you got to keep that in mind. You got before you're giving out too many compliments to people from uh from that part of the world, Jason. I know it's it's a, a tight-lipped thing with you guys. All right, we got to get into the show. Let's uh we got some stuff to talk about tonight. And now that I'm, you know, right in the runner show, I'd like it if we could actually go through it. So, uh Dimitri, roll the bumper. Let's get into the recent news. All right, we all prayed on the downfall of EG, and thank God it finally happened. That team not going to be around for too much longer. They're selling their bloody blast spot, and Cloud9 bought it. They loved it. They lapped it up, and they paid, uh, from my reports, a an interesting sum of money. Now, uh, for those people who may have missed it, uh, you, fuck, in 2025, we won't have any more franchise-slash-partner leagues. So I don't know why Cloud9 is spending so much money on something that they were normally you know, getting through the showdowns for anyway. Um, I guess it's two group stages and there is like some revenue share splits I learned about. But Prof, you hear this news, it comes across your desk. You go, Why the fuck is anybody buying a partner spot in a league that is only going to exist for one more year? What was your initial thoughts? Seemed, well, it all depends on how much they're paying, right? Uh, okay, I well, I was the... told from, and I can't, I'm not going to say by whom, but I had multiple people uh, send me some messages. <laughs> and uh yeah and uh they told me they told me roughly uh nine hundred thousand dollar dues that's like that's like half of nico's salary right yeah i think so well yeah yeah it's like <laughs> close 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 no but without that, the that, bonuses but, without the bonuses these right. were reputable reputable people um who 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 mentioned these kind of sums to me which was quite curious i didn't even message them they just reached out to me and told me uh, how much how much it was so uh it, it it was interesting when i heard that figure for 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 a year and essentially just like kind of two group stages which is what they would have been paying for there is like revenue share that they get from yeah. blast that is so, very significant which covers i think more than 50 percent of that anyway so uh yeah it's interesting it's well, uh i mean to put a little, to put a little context on that i know um when i read this tommy wrote like a something on a sub stack i don't know if you guys saw it it probably didn't get like i don't think he even allows retweets anymore so it's just for like fun i guess but um this was like early december and in this article he says um these leagues pay partially performance-based revenue share to each team with minimum guarantees reportedly in the 250 to five hundred thousand dollar range top performers likely receiving upwards of twice as much um so this is this is for the eight teams that are in both blast and and epl um but they've been receiving like across the year he says upwards of 750k in incremental revenue for being those partner teams so just to give that some context that's kind of where the rev share value is in return for being part of both leagues i guess in theory if they're just part of blast you could maybe just to be conservative just half it i don't, I don't actually know the numbers of what they pay out or anything like that but um this is from tommy who who is a gm of a, of a top team and part of these conversations so um i would take that to be reasonably reasonably accurate it, you know you come last place in blast groups you get five hundred and forty thousand. that's pretty good i can do that <laughs> yeah so i mean that, that, you, that right that, there, you, just, you just need the nine hundred thousand to get in longer, yeah so i just the, need a small look think about that. guys yeah that's i'm it. good it's, for it you, there's more I mean, than 50 percent covered there you could probably get it you, you have what a million followers on twitter right so you, you can just Go to a bank and ask. It's a dollar per follower, right? I think yeah, what, I think yeah. that's that's how it works. So okay. I think it's pretty easy. But no, I think when you when you add that in, and then you add just the the fact that being in these group stages helps you like boost your rank and everything, and that's not that bad. It's not that bad. It gives you some security on the team. But uh, could have invested that in an actual opera, which yeah, I would right. prefer a lot more, or maybe both. Why not? No, no, no. They're good without the opera. Boomer just taken over. Name one good opera uh my mate my mate joe it's pretty good 
like honestly like better than no offers i could probably just one of my mates just plug him in he would probably it would probably be better joe versus perfecto well depending on the map you go to joe versus perfecto for a spot yeah maybe joe uh, versus hobbit yeah Insane. would be pretty good would yeah. be good no but realistically how how is this how is this real how is this real life are we going to talk about cloud nine like the theme actually now well, we or, will or do we have something I'll, else I'll say to, to keep us on subject and to answer the question i'm not huge i think it's a little bit crazy to get a spot for just for just one year but i guess there are tangible benefits to being able to compete in blast and obviously if they win and do well and perform better than what they've seen i would imagine they at least come out equal in that exchange right like if they i don't know if they'll actually go on to win a team i don't know if you can expect it but if you go win like the the spring finals or the fall finals i mean across the year you you probably you probably meet that point and like Launder said, there's the tangible benefits of increasing your position in the ranking, getting different invites, getting better seedings, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, there, there's other things to it, but it feels like there's some more that has to go right to make this deal equal the value. Um, but without knowing the numbers, it's hard to be like ultra critical on it. You know, yeah. like, you know, like, I, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan it, of it just because it it's crazy for one year. If it was their last million dollars, then it would be like, okay, maybe don't do that. But like with these super orgs, it's sort of they're operating on like a budget that sort of doesn't really make sense in the first place. And like, mm. like they can tell people they're at blast if they win one tournament and almost break even, then they get like then they win. And if they, yeah, anything that raises their status is like worth extra. I feel like then, yeah, if it was like Ents or Spirit or something who don't have as much money. Well, also, I mean, I guess you're, you're probably feeling a little flush with cash as well, considering you just so- sold Shiro, which I'm assuming was a pretty handsome chunk of change. You know, we got some extra cash in the buyout. Do we know any idea how much Shiro went for? Right? I know that there was... Oh, I don't some, know. You're the one getting some... people messaging you with fingers. Yeah, you Chad, have the like, numbers, right? and Look, <laughs> I can tell you it. one amount that it 100% wasn't. 1.7 million. 1,700,050. <laughs> that's, that's for sure not the amount that it was. Where I can guarantee you. Where did come from? I want to know where he got that from. Is he just going, yeah, just sitting there, taking a shit. He goes, this seems like a good number. Let's a, just quick Google, a quick Google. There's a TikTok uh, that says it was a little bit more than a million. Okay, but, but, yeah. that's great. Just throwing that out there for you. Well, Spirit won TI well, in the yeah, last the couple TI years, prize didn't pool was $3 million, and Spirit won this year. So we know that he probably cost less than that. <laughs> <laughs> and then got you let's take the money from the Dota team and put it into count. Oh, for fuck's sake. Like, it's not that like, is a great pickup for this roster, right? Poor, I feel bad for Mr. Aunt Frost, right? Just coming up from the academy. And then he got uh, someone, I saw someone make a good, uh, a good comparison. He got norked. Right, they all yeah, have that device. One. That's that's a great comparison. So, I think you look at that, and yeah, sure. What what do you meant to say? Um, we can we can pivot into this now. So yeah, Spirit uh, have been able to sign Mr. Shiro. So that's not too shabby of a pickup uh, going alongside of Donk, and then you've got Chopper still in game leading. Magic's there as the right hand man, and then Zontix uh, is the fifth of the team with Halley still coaching. So uh, I don't know. Right, I, I don't think anyone is going to sit there and say this is this is a downgrade. Right, that that's not even in the conversation. It's but my question, right, and and Prof, this is what I want an answer to, mate. Okay, why did Shiro leave Cloud Nine, or why did Cloud Nine put Shiro on the bench? This is the one question I have not heard a single thing about. Honestly, I've not heard anything. I haven't even heard like rumors more than I've heard speculations. And it's just like whatever people can come up with. It's like, oh, he played with Nafani and was good. And then uh, in the electronic system, he didn't have much like enough space that he wanted. He couldn't really the control. But it's just people like giga speculating. And that's all I can do as well. Like I haven't really heard anything, which is impressive actually to, to why this happened. And I don't really understand it and really sucks for cloud nine um at the same time i don't really understand why they don't feel any urgency to replace him Uh, in my opinion it's absolute absolute insanity i think henry made it like a good tweet when he uh retweeted like uh, grooves quote that they're not looking for an opera and said like if i did this the world would be on fire like that is true like it's it's completely ridiculous that they're not doing anything and it's not like they there's no free free operas out there this art frost kid, frost kid just got benched like just just get him just get him on the team that's it it's so simple who do you replace hobbit of course yeah oh okay but it's not even a conversation at this point right like you, you have to keep burmish now he's doing the in-game leading stuff electronic back in fine form on the rifle right axile we're still hoping for the days that he gets back some some level of consistency to what made him what he is 
Uh, I, 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 yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. The fact that Shiro doesn't stick around to play with Boomich at least a little bit, man. So sad. It's so sad. That's, that's I mean, interesting, right? Why, why is he? That's that tells me that there's obviously issues with other players who are still on the roster, then, right? Like, well, if he, I, I well, no, I don't know if that tells me that. I don't know. I, it just my, seems strange. My speculation from the outside would be because it felt to me like towards the end of Cloud9, we started getting a picture. Nafani said all those interviewers said were like he was he was the in game leader in terms of calling, but like he wasn't like a leadership figure within the team. So it really felt to me towards the end of Cloud9, like after Nafani left, that the voices that had the most impact on how the team was going to play was Shiro, Groove, and maybe Hobbit a little bit. And I think if you're Shiro and you have that kind of voice and you have that kind of authority within the team and then Electronic comes in as an in-game leader and starts changing things and they bring Boomich in to be a new in-game leader, all of a sudden if you're Shiro, like you, your responsibility and your impact on how the team is playing starts to kind of fade away. And I imagine that can be frustrating. And especially when the results aren't going well, you see it going into a direction that you don't agree with and you just feel like it's it's your time to move on within the team. That's mm. that's kind of that's kind of the outside speculation and angle that that I look at the situation with. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that that's not a okay. So we're saying that there's voices that are coming in here, which is crowded the way that he wants to do business, right? But is that that going to be different over there on Spirit? Like he's just going to go into that team and go, "All right, guys, we're playing my way." I don't think that's going to be the case. It maybe it's just the idea of a fresh start because there's a lot of baggage within that roster yeah. and everything that's happened. So uh, maybe wanting to move away a little bit from that is is good. And then there was all the speculation about where he could go. And there was people like, oh, yeah, he can learn English. He'll be fine. Put him on one of these international teams. Well, he just ended up, you know, with the with the Russian speaking team, which I think is best for him. Um, and, yeah, for and, sure. For overall. So but I, I mean, the biggest part of this all is just that, it, you know, at this point, it is an honor to be able to say you could play with Donk. You know, like Shiro can one day say, I played with Donk. And the that alone has got to be worth something. Exactly. <laughs> How many majors are they going to win together, Launders? They're going to win, like, pending, like, natural disasters and health issues and pandemics <laughs> pandemics <laughs> to two majors i'm giving them two majors okay a duo as a but duo do you think this the, the rest of the lineup is is that impressive the re i actually think zonic is very good and ken has lots of time to get better he's very young he also we cast him a ton in the academy league really likes Zonic or zontic sorry uh both honestly and then <laughs> uh Chopper, Chopper, I think Chopper is a very good IGL, but I don't think he's like, I think he gets bigged up a lot, but I don't think he's like a uh, elite level. I don't well, think this he's is even where we as get good to as find out he was right? at. Or... Okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that is because, true. Because now he has like proper player, like, well, with Donk and with Shiro, if he's still like getting, I think getting bigged up before was because he was working with pieces that weren't as good, but now he's got some really good pieces. So if he can't make it work with this, then yeah, I'm on board with you. He does get bigged up a lot, right? We, we give Chopper a lot of praise. Um, I, 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 but comes from that Vegas should, should we do an, Academy. Should we do like an IGL tier list though? Cause like for me, is he like, better than Boomich? No, I don't think so. I don't think okay. he's a better player or caller than Boomich. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Or, or think, if you look at it historically, probably hard to say that. Uh, that is true. Like, obviously, now this Cloud9 Boomich, I'm not really judging much. It feels very dysfunctional right now. I think Boomich has actually done a really good job considering they're kind of too silly to think about getting an off like that. <laughs> But, I mean, to be we, honest, can I play tier, devil's advocate on that angle really quick? Oh, uh, here we go. Okay. Can I just go. play devil's advocate for a second? If you're if in you CS2 bring up right liquid now, and by the way, the liquid. No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm not bringing up liquid and nitro. I'm not going in that direction. Don't, don't put words in my mouth. Um, <laughs> If you if four you years think ago, about, Jason, four years ago, uh, <laughs> if you think about all the conversations that we've heard from the top offers, pro offers, everyone kind of saying the op has less of an impact, oh my God. the op this, is less of an appointment, okay. the op is weakened. Why is there a benefit to in the short term for this first major being like, we can't find an offer that we really want to bring in, so let's operate without one and try and take advantage of this early stage in CS2 before the before they you know adjust and fix the game and tweak the game and the the power and strength of the op come back to where we want it is there is there value in them saying in the short term we're going to make the sacrifice of an opera and we're going to play the game as it is at this moment and then if the game kind of changes and offers start having more of an impact that we like we'll come back into the market for an opera no because you just spent half your practice teaching everyone how to op on a different map so why why don't you just get an opera and then you replace the opera with a better opera instead yeah i also don't really because a mid-tier opera might not bring you value I would I would agree from a perspective of like if this is a team that's like you know a sprout or something you know that has to money ball the situation but they just like went all out to buy these fucking Navi players and 
then they're just like giving up essentially on this major that's coming up, like the first CS2 major. For me, that doesn't make any sense. But I think I, that's I, the I difference. I don't think they look at it as giving up on the major. I don't think they're looking they're, at it like... But then they're delusional. Okay. Actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I heard Monacy try to get the C9 or C9 tried to buy Monacy already. I'm pretty did, sure C9 tried try. to buy Monacy. I yeah. also heard they, they approached Dexter as well, but it didn't pan out. But I don't know. I, I don't know. want to go to Greyhound, so... <laughs> I hate playing yeah. their names. That's a slow man. burn. That's a they, slow burn. They really need to do something with their names. I'm just looking, right? So Zyber was the MVP of the World Finals, and what 36% of his kills were the AWP. Torji was the third highest rated player, like 50% of his kills were the AWP for the event. 54.24%. Right. This thing about the orping stuff, I feel look, it's maybe it's not overblown, but I think orpers are still going to be hugely impactful within the game of Counter-Strike. And I, I, I don't see a way. Look, maybe slightly, right? Oh, it's not as good. Or, the, you know, device given that interview a couple of weeks ago, like, yeah, we've got to adapt to it and whatnot. It's just going to be a learning curve for everybody, right? Where we have a lot of different little uh, issues that people are talking about every day with this game. Um, well, I, I think I think it, it intersects a couple of different things about the game that are being talked to. Like, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but the game feels like it's a little bit more faster paced at the moment than what we had at the end of end of CSGO. I think potentially with MR12 teams are considering the economy and how many more rounds you have where you want to like kind of half buy or force where you might not have the AWP. I think there's maybe a bunch of different factors into it that Cloud9 could be saying, <clears throat> excuse me, um, there's reasons why we don't need an opera at the moment. Oh. <clears throat> Oh, we're dying. losing him. I know. Yeah, he can't, I can't even, even buy his own. I can't even get through right the devil's now. advocate. <laughs> yeah. I am trying to make some bullshit up on the fly, but am I making it sound at least decent? Yeah. <laughs> there, it's uh, not that bad. It's not that bad. It's a decent angle, right? It's but I, I, I think it's not going to age think it's, very well. I think it's a risky philosophy to take, but I think that's how we have to look at it. Not like these guys are fucking morons. Like these guys are taking a risk in the philosophy of how they're building this team for this first major. And let's see where they go after that. No, just, I don't think they're morons. They just. They're just making the wrong call, and that's okay. it. I just want to be on But are they just wasting that time is, with yeah. it anyway, right? Like, if even if what you're saying is true, Jason, and they're, they're going, oh, yeah, we don't think it makes that much of a big deal. Okay, so they they potter along for the next couple of months, and then after the major, and then let's say it does, like, orpers are still very impactful. It's like, okay, well, now we've all just wasted time trying to orp. Can we actually get a fucking orper in here? Like, what are we doing? Right? We're, 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 you're playing positions that aren't going to be natural for a lot of these players, right? Especially if you're having to supplement with the enemy. Think about overpass on your CT side. Right. Okay. So someone now has to play a completely different role. To th nobody in that team has ever felt like an opera at all. Like what? What? What are we talking yeah. about? Like it's not yeah, even actually... any secondary opera. In that case. <laughs> My hottest take about this is that Boomich actually looks like the most like apt opera compared to everyone else. Who when I sometimes see them like walk in angles and stuff, I'm like, you're you're not like uh you're not going to be able to do this forever. Like you just can't. Like you don't know all the angles. Like you're not like Brophy right now. And they, they walk it, in and get rifled down. It's like, I, I feel like Boomich somehow is a p person who that happens to the least, but he's not like good enough to justify spending the five grand every round. That's the good thing with like when you get to be a secondary AWP or a hobby AWP, right? Is you're unpredictable. People don't know what's coming. They don't know what peaks you're going for. You know, you mm -hmm. get to do things a little bit more outside of the box. But then once it becomes more refined and we're looking at high level Counter Strike where your, you know, heat map or your, your pathing and everything is being looked at, you're going to get fucking wrecked. Like this is this is a different game out there. These mm -hmm. orpers are watching each other. They're looking at the details, looking at the peaks like to go for. And you're just some just you're just some guy. Like it's not even your job. Like you're out. It's like what's going on, man. So I I I don't think Cloud9 are making the right call. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe Jason's right. Maybe J maybe Jason's bang on. There were some people who were asking questions. That there was, someone was tweeting saying, "Oh, you know, how good do you think this?" And and I I. I apologize. I'm a little bit tired, so hopefully this isn't too nasty. But I really hate the question that comes our way of, you know, oh, how good do you think this team can be? It's like, well, how long's a fucking piece of string, right? Like, <laughs> at the moment in Counter Strike, you were talking about a tier list, uh, Launders, regarding in game leaders. Like, a tier list in terms of even just the Counter Strike teams right now would be fucking hard to do. You've got Vitality yeah. as number one, you've got Phase at number two. Then outside of that, you don't, Mouse doesn't have a fifth. Navi, are they really the fourth best team in the world? Well, HLTV TV rankings have them there. VP are coming in at fifth. Right, like G two, we saw them one one fucking tournament of any salt with Nexa. Like, what? How are we meant to weigh any of this? I actually, ha I haven't looked at HLTV's By ranking prize for money, almost like Valve. almost two years now. I would say, like the last year of CS:GO, which is this year, like the first half, maybe like a full year and a half. I haven't looked at the HLTV rankings for anything because they haven't like mattered to me, like you're saying. Like it was always like loosely 
something between Vitality G2 and FaZe at different points in time mm -hmm. being the clear number one team and, and then everything else not mattering at all. Yeah. So I, I, it hasn't mattered. Like every time I, I sit down to cast a game, I always have an idea in my head. I think this team is going to win for sure. Mm -hmm. This is, And I don't have that feeling anymore in almost any matchup. Yeah. I, Especially I think... at the world final, the team that had been together the longest was Navi. It was wonderful. They're the longest standing roster at the world final. Is that crazy? I think like, that is actually pretty stupid. outside of Vitality and FaZe right now. That those are like tier one teams, and Vitality is obviously better. But other than that, like what the fuck is going on? And even if you look at like, I don't know. I, I feel like what would also happen. There is almost like a group of teams that's playing like tier one events, and then a group of teams that's playing like tier two events. So you have like VP Spirit. Yes. Monty, they are playing all of these tier two events. They're playing against each other. And then the other teams are playing against each other. You don't even see the overlap properly. And when it happens, you see like Monty plays quite well. You know, complexity makes fucking finals. I feel like you're in a very weird spot regarding that. And that's why the major is again gonna be pretty, pretty exciting because everyone gets to play the same shit for once, right? And Katowice, I guess, to some degree as well. Yeah, uh, what kind of it's obviously we're missing a team like Liquid who we're, we're going to get to see play in the open fucking qualifiers over there in North America, which would be luck. crazy. Good luck. We'll, yeah, we'll talk especially with the with the online side of that, but we'll talk more about that later. But I, I think a bit more to the point here is when you look at, so now Falcons, they take the core of Ents, so well, now they jump up to number nine in those rankings, right? And they jump up quite high within the Valve rankings as well. And that's something which is fair enough, right? I understand how how this the the core. Like, I think it's good of them and Ents both to secure cores that are getting them positions in these top events. But it's really hard right now to put your finger on who the top teams are. So it is quite an interesting thought experiment to go Vitality phase and then who, and then you have to actually like Mouse. Who are they going to get as a fifth? Were they happy with Brolin? Right? Were they happy with Brolin's performance there? Probably. He fits the age. He fits the bill. Anyway, I don't want to get fuck it. I'm going to get too far off track, and then we'll end up doing a seven hour show. Um, let Let's keep the the focus here. Let's uh, Let's jump into the next one now, Dimitri. If you could bring up the Vox Pop, uh, we did a poll uh, regarding the changes within Ents. So this is where we asked the people at home what they thought, and wanted to know who got the best of uh, the roster changes over there in the Ents camp, right? So uh, we've had players end up in a whole bunch of different places. We had Nerds head over to Heroic. We obviously had uh, the core head over towards Falcons. And uh, then we had, uh, who, who am I fucking missing here? Uh, oh, obviously Ents pulling in nine and keeping Deha and uh, going Polish with a Danish in-game leader. So um, this this is an interesting one. Lond, as you look at this, what do you think? Who do you think got the best out of uh, out of this trade? And you could look at it from many different angles. I would just like to say that I filmed content with Glaive on the first day of the Blast World Finals. And the golf? Spent, yeah, the golf thing, exactly. Okay. And I just asked him, like, how you doing? Like, how's, how's the new team? Everything like that. And by his answers, I know there was a quote from him saying that he didn't believe, he, he wasn't sure if everyone would stay on the roster. But from talking to him, I don't think he truly believed that. So I would just like to say on his behalf, because I think he was being very professional in terms of all of the media that he's done since then or answering people's questions and like carrying himself professionally. But I really think he had no clue that this was coming. I, I, I really don't think so. And uh, I think, and I remember like two days before we were like at go-karts and I saw Glaive there watching, um, there was like a motorcycle race happening. And we're like, yo, you're going to go to go-karts. He's like, oh, you can do go-karts here. That's cool. Well, I can't do that because I only have 48 hours to find teammates. And I was just like, <laughs> holy shit, like that's so real. Uh, and I felt terrible for him. So I just wanted to say that as someone who saw him. Because I don't think yeah, he was, it was himself, they had to get but... they had to get a lineup before the rust roster locks, I think, right? Yes, before the roster lock, exactly. Yeah. So they got, yeah, I think he got really thrown into it. Um so I would say not ends. But <laughs> I think I nice. think Falcons. I think Falcons 100. Falcons are who's going to disagree with Falcons? Fight me right now. Yeah, it's hard, right? Especially when they, they they get these spots because of having the core of the team. You get Snappy, who's yeah. been on the tip of the tongue in terms of in-game leader for this year. Uh, you add Madden and some Pius alongside of Magisk, and then uh, Boros, if he does have that potential that everybody's touting, it seems quite exciting. I think just think from the organizational standpoint, that's probably the big win. Okay, we secured a strong core of a strong team that's existed. Now, you know, is it just a, a weaker version of Ents? Well, time will tell. I guess, what are you looking at this, Jason? You see Magiskin here. You don't have Deha in the team. You don't have Nerts in the team. Nerts is probably the biggest name missing from this. How do you, do you think it's an upgrade, a downgrade? Like, think about it from the core perspective, Snappy, Madden, and Sapias. It's an upgrade in the paycheck, I'm sure. But in the team overall, what, what do you think? 
Oh, I think it's, I think it's a, I mean, personally, I think it's a downgrade in, of the team from what Ents was and what they'd been accomplishing. Um, Magis, I would take, you know, clears, clears Dia, but I think missing, missing Nerts, you missed a huge, a huge amount of production that Nerts was able to provide. Um, so I think it kind of got picked apart. I agree. Falcons is the clear winner in how this exchange actually panned out, but, um, you know, this is this is a big test for Zonic and a big test for um, for Snappy to make this team, I think, better into what Ents was, because at the end of the day, that's going to be what it's compared to. And they just spent what, like a year as like a top three team and probably go past that to last year um, and coming out of coming out of the covid break and everything like that. Um pretty strong as well. So, I mean, they they were they were high up in the rankings for a long time. A lot of it's going to depend on how Boros pans out if they eventually swap him out or if they kind of like the way he's developing as a player. Um, but I think missing out on Nerds is, is is a really big piece of the puzzle that you're going to like to have had because Madden, I think, is a great, great role player. He's not he's not going to match any kind of production. Magus isn't going to have the same kind of, you know, aggression and assertiveness that Nerds had despite the fact that he's got great skills. So I think there's there's elements you're going to be missing that Nerds brought if Boros can't step up and develop as a player. Um, so I think they win the exchange in this, in this little trade-off, but I don't think this is as good as the actual Ents roster was before all these trades. I mean, yeah. Boros is a bit of a mercenary when it comes to just playing the way he wants to play. But I think like with Zonic, at least there's a chance that he could be yeah. shaped up really well. Like I, <laughs> I feel like you have to listen on this team and Snappy is a pretty austere IGL. Like when you talk to him at events, he doesn't laugh if, if a joke's not funny. He doesn't take lightly when people talk badly Fucker. about Ents. Like he's very serious about everything. And I think that uh, he's going to run a, run a tight ship. That might be really good for Boros, but um, I think I think the other thing to... this this trade did for Falcons too is it kind of gets past you know it changes the conversation from look at how they failed to build the super team with Nico and potentially with Monacy coming over and it was a lot of disappointment and it it gets past that conversation too. I mean that doesn't matter at all in game, but from the outside you're like, yep, they failed to build that super team initially. A little bit of like PR embarrassment, but this is this is a steal to be able to get these three players. I mean, they were or, so disruptive, man. Falcons were so disruptive. And if, if we didn't, like, I think this is one of the least kind of uh, disruptive situations we could have ended up in in terms of top teams, right? This could have been G2 getting affected, Vitality not finding a player like Mezzi. Like, Enz obviously got completely gutted, which is terrible for them. But this actually, the situation we're in right now is like, Apex proves he's an amazing. Uh, he Apex proves he's an amazing IGL with Mezzi and Flamesy coming in. Then we have G two pretty much intact. Then we have um, you know other people falling into place. And Falcons get a pretty good lineup. Like we almost got Falcons with like a pretty bad lineup and three teams completely, you know, ruined out of the end of the year. Yeah. I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell you what else I think about these trades too. I think of all the teams. I think I think Ents picking up uh, the the nine players is actually better off than Heroic and the team that they're starting to put together. I'm not a huge fan of this heroic lineup that they're uh, to shape up. Yeah. I want to just touch on Falcons before we go there. I think yeah. what you guys said about Boros is like Zonic and Snappy. If he doesn't perform now, he's never gonna perform. Like th this is like, and he has sure. everyone was super excited about him at the major, and then we kind of also got all of the all of the info from the interviews that he's kind of essentially like a pug star. That that's yeah. kind of his approach, right? From what SDY with the all aim said. no brain, right? Yeah, that that's kind of the approach. Can't and get like, away with that with Zonic, I, I guarantee. That's not gonna fly with these two yeah. guys. So like, if he if he has it, he's gonna improve and he's gonna improve a lot. Uh, because also on this team, you have to look at it. Who's the star rifle? It has to be him. Like, yes. it's not gonna be Madden and Snappy, you know. And then uh, Magisk is he is a fucking star in its own rights. But if you move him out of what he's doing, that doesn't really make sense uh, because yeah. he's so fucking good at it. So I I think that's very important for this team could be kind of the make or break but at the same time they do get time they bought so much time with this which i think is the most important thing for them because this this lineup with longs and an mhl was boot camping when they got the news like really? they were they were set to play <laughs> so with this line <laughs> and they played like a few games a few days and then they got the call that this is coming through because no one knew what the fuck was going to happen this was all ah. for the last minute. So they got cut actually, from the team and we're like, oh crap, actually, we need you back. Come to the boot camp. And then they're at the boot camp and you're like, actually, we see get ya. the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> so if someone checks on Steam friends list. Like, I need to see what's here. <laughs> so they're, but you have to give it to Falcons that they pulled it off because 
there was the room, the report that came out about all of these players, about I mean Madden Nerds and Sunfire is going to Heroic together, but shit happened. It didn't didn't come through, and Heroic in that situation would be fucking sick because they have the core that is now an end sure, sure. three, three player core plus Shush and Tessis or whatever combination they ended up ended up uh, putting together. It was th- it's their IGL, Kickson, right? Their IGL is going to be announced tomorrow. Like Kickson is rumored, so that's a really good combination, right? Of players that you have there. So it managed to come through. What did Heroic do? How they fuck it up? They everyone knew this was supposed to happen it was told i was told like 10 times that it's done you know th- that kind of a mm. thing and uh obviously it wasn't done we saw that ens was like tweeting some stuff about you know it's not over until it's over or until the money is transferred so i guess there was some slowness from her arc side that falcons hopped in and and got it signed because as you said a lot of launders like it wasn't at the beginning of the tournament that people knew what was going to happen it was like mm. still in the air so it was kind of uh in the last few days that it got signed and then submitted right for all of the spots so it's really really crazy and, and this is just like the parts that we know like the story about the all of these transfers i feel like in a few years hopefully it comes out fully because it, it's it's insane well it's yeah, already that... written one book so yeah yeah, I heard that. I heard the whole saga was was actually a crazy, crazy affair. Like the 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 two days would it, it would be a very cool story to eventually see the public eye with all the back and forths. And I mean, I, I think actually, I mean, I don't know. Does anyone have anything left to say in Falcons? I was going to say like I think Ants actually turned out okay considering the situation they were they were put in. They literally <laughs> had fucking no players. <laughs> yeah, they had they yeah. had nothing. And yeah, yeah. Had, and like like Glaive said, they had two days, forty eight hours before roster locks, where they had to get a team, and that's not bad. What they've managed to scrape together. I yeah, think no doubt. With the the, with the biggest thing for me again is they've just guaranteed themselves the positions in these bigger events, right? Like mm-hmm. they've they've made sure that they kept the core together. They're going to get themselves a chance to try and compete at the major, same as Katowice. It's an interesting risk to take in the sense that. Uh, you've just got a new coach. I guess the coach is Polish as well, right? So uh, you got a new coach. You've got the in-game leader is the only one in the team who's not Polish. So h- how the fuck is that going to fly? Is is are they going <laughs> to is it the you know wolf in sheep's clothing? Are they going to work out that hey he's he's not one of them eventually at some point and they just get rid of Glaive and Glaive's just signed for this team or I I, I Glaive can't ca- catch a fucking break at the moment, can he? This well, is it's I, mental. I would... Uh, yeah, he's he's certainly been put in a really tough spot. But I would imagine when when this move is going through and your ends and you have forty eight hours and you and you have all your options out in front of you of, of where you can go, what you can pivot, how you can put teams together, you put him in front of Glaive and you make sure you have his blessing on the route that you're about to take. So I mean, it's I guess he gets the chance to pick like the best of a horrible situation or the best of best of the bad things in front of him. But I don't think I don't think this is all that terrible. To be, it could have been left with, with no team, right? That, or that you could have been left in a situation where you're not taking a core from a team. You're picking and choosing one player from here, a free agent here, buying someone out here, you know, and then all of a sudden you have this piecemeal team. At least he gets a core of players that have played together. And I guess, I guess the next question would be, because we always talk about this isn't like a true international roster, so we haven't really brought up any kind of language barrier, but with him being the only one who's not Polish, I know Hades and Diha obviously speak English. Hades has great English. I'm not really sure about Goofy and Kyler, but is there a language barrier that needs to be, nah, that'd that we be need fine. to be concerned about? I think that'd be fine. I don't they think can all speak NPL, right? Yeah, I, th- yeah. I, I think, and I've spoken to those guys before. Goofy doesn't really say a lot, but I've spoken to Kyler a little bit before, and he's he's <laughs> he's actually the guy who came up okay. talking to me. So uh, I, think, I think they're going to be fine in terms I of that think, you know, everyone's saying that there's going to be a Polish theme in the future. I don't think that's really going to happen. I don't think Ents has any interest in ma- making a Polish lineup. I don't think there's a Polish IGL out there that makes sense. Like they are unless you literally... get Shuey. That's what mm. they said when uh, Ents was finished. That they were never going to be not Finnish. Prof, anything can happen. No, this is the inverse of that. But okay, <laughs> thank you for the <laughs> insight right here. Yeah. So I do think they're just going to go towards the international roster uh when they need roster changes but the thing is like this is such a shit situation for glaive i think he really fucked up by even going to ends i mean he knew he even said that he knew that there was a possibility that players don't stick around they're all gone yeah yeah that's a little bit different but the thing is let's be real these rumors were there i knew these rumors if he didn't know these rumors what the fuck is his agent doing? And he's a player as well, right? They're always much more connected to the shit yes. than we are. I'm pretty yeah. sure he knew it. Like he was either like too optimistic 
or misinformed. It's one of these two things. And because you go into that team, you have no chance to do anything. These players are going to leave regardless. Like you can't fucking, what, what is he going to fucking win the tournament? He's not going to win a tournament. It's like people that are looking for a new team. They're yeah. not there to win the tournament. They're not practicing with you, like getting in your fucking ideas that you don't even fuck. They're not even great probably because you haven't been playing CS for a while. And even when you were playing, you weren't that great. So it's like, how, how is this, how is this fairy tale going to work? It was never going to work. So instead of going to heroic where he actually could have maybe had a team in, in some ways, um, that is Danish and build a date and like it kind of would have made sense. Well, imagine him at heroic with Shush and now we start building a team. Right? Shush and Tessas, and, then... and then you add Nico those who they now got right now. They have yeah. a, have a Danish fucking lineup. You have Dupree or something that kind of makes sense. I'm not yeah. saying it's a world beater, but but at least the lineup that makes sense and he has a chance to build something. Now he got like inserted into nine practically. Like how, how is how is this gonna work? Is he gonna be able to now tell <laughs> everyone how to play CS? Uh, also. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know Heroic are in a bad way right now, but it also assumes that he had the option to just, like, pick Heroic. At the I'm time. pretty sure, sure he, must he turned have down it. Heroic. Yeah, I was going to say, there oh, must have been okay. a conversation with Heroic, right? Because they would have wanted to stay Danish for at least, the, well, I'm assuming they would have wanted to stay. Now they have to go international, but now they have three Danes and an Israeli. It's like, what the fuck's going on over there? Like The Nikodos signing, if you're going to go international and you're Heroic, why are you getting Nikodos? Name an Orbelonders. Name a good offer. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Nikodos has Prop's been really good in CS2. Here is pretty good. Nikodos yeah, but, has been really good in CS2. In, in Preci, right? Yeah. Yeah, but what are they playing? Danish. He, they're Danish. KW. They're Danish. <laughs> <laughs> they were doing well. Like, they were I, they were on my radar for a bit there. I was looking at the results they were getting, and since Roy had joined, they were doing really well, right? Roy had got left from Fnatic and went to them, and they were winning a lot of, of, of matches, and they're playing against, like, the Bet Booms, the World, the Fours, as those type of guys. So, I mean, people are saying there's not that many crazy offers for international lineup because, like, people are saying Dexter Dexter's not going to join. He left OG for a reason. Art Frost, uh, he's just going to go to a Russian, team, Russian speaking team. Zorty is not going to join. He's just joined uh, Bet Boom, you know. Regali, okay. But Cloud9 <laughs> is right. There's not a whole lot of offers to go for. We just I mean, we're back joke. to the start. There, there, there are, if you're Russian speaking, then there are. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> No, he's right. It, that, it, from their from their region, they just have a lot of them, right? It just depends. Do you want to put up with like the D underscore pressure kids like fucking Deco and stuff, or do you actually, you know, that that's they they pick up the litter over there. Someone's just said Sirison in the chat. Like, Simple. Yeah, Boys, hey. it's free agent right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe Nikodos. I mean, I take it back. Nikodos is a great pickup, but now you may as well just go fucking Danish. So we're just stuck in this. Yeah. It's just stupid. It just doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense. And I think that's why if we go back to the to the poll that we had. Definitely, the 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 correct answer is we all lost this this transfer period. We all lost. There's so I didn't many even know teams. that was an option. I'd change yeah. my answer to that. That actually it, won. It, yeah, it, it, it was. It's such a shitty transfer period. Like every every team is just like a random. I don't even it's, know. It's almost like reminiscent of like the rosters. Remember, like the beginning of, of the. Yeah, online I, I disagree era? with this. I disagree. With getting okay. this liquid, getting this liquid with Kadian, I think makes up for heroic entirely as long as Kadian's still playing. I think that's great. But that, that, how many other good changes were there, right? Like, I guess Mezzi that, to and Vitality. Mezzi to Vitality Mezzi is also Vitality, good. Mezzi Vitality is sweet. Frozen, yeah. vi frozen phase is And, and is if you good. think about it, Mezzi to Vitality means that uh, Magic's, Magic's, Magisk, fuck, can still make another team good, right? He can be He's on Falcons and Vitality is still great. So I think that actually <laughs> is like... <laughs> I get, I've cast them for six years, six, seven years. I still Magic to Magisk. <laughs> Try, try casting with Anders when he just throws his name out in Danish like yeah, every no, other time. Vegas goes mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. But isn't that true? I mean, like, at least, like, Liquid was worse off. Liquid's better off now. Vitality think... are just as good. That's really good. Then you have Falcons, who actually managed to be good without ruining Vitality at the same time. So that's good, too. But, so it's not that bad at all. I think, I think um... the, bummer, the bummer about it is it feels like, I mean, we just kind of listed off like Liquid looks cool, Falcons kind of wins out here, and then the, the other changes that have been up. kind of cool. Yeah, it's 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 Vitality and FaZe. So it's like the top has had, the top teams have had some cool ones, but you still, you know, I think roster changes, sequences in this in the scene are always better when you get like the number nine and 10 team that's able to jump up like three spots and actually start competing with the top. That's spirit, so, baby. 
But we just have to find out. Yeah, Spirit is here. Spirit is, is really cool, obviously, as well. We'll see if they can compete with the top. But you want to see that more competitive nature. And, but the problem is, too, like, the longer these changes come in, like, the more changes that are happening, because it feels like we're getting, we've gotten so many, it's like, those teams have, like, a ramp-up period. So, like, we're not actually going to get the answer to this until the major, which is what everyone's eyeballs are set on. But that's that's the best part about all of this, right? Is all and again we go back to like this conversation about what's the status quo of Counter Strike right now? Where are you going to place all these teams? Well, we're going to work that out very very shortly because of the major. And I'm hoping that there are some of these names that are just like chomping along at these online tournaments who are doing a good job, or we do get you know Spirit making an actual dent with the big names they have there. But they're the they're a team on the periphery. Like I would love for the Mongols to actually come in and just fucking and and actually you know make a top eight round. That'd be sick. That'd uh, because be cool. This is a good time for everything to get shaken up a little bit with with this regard because even though we know these household names and they're playing in these partner leagues and we're seeing them from week to week, you've made a good point before where we were talking about some of the teams who are only playing in like the ESL Challenger events, playing against other teams who are only playing the ESL Challenger events and the top teams is well, the top, quote unquote, are playing against each other. We don't actually have a good test right now to know who is the best teams in the world other than Vitality and FaZe. Outside of that, it's all just, uh, I would say, up for debate. Um, and, and even when you look at a team like Mouse, who have been showing some good form, they don't even have a fucking fifth. And that's going to definitely play a big factor on what that as a roster is going to look like as well. So there was just some more roster news that came out. Launders and Jason, maybe the two of you can get excited about this. George Schnortz and Junior Depart EG ahead of reported move to Nouns. And Nouns would be uh, Carson, CJ, Markey, Junior, and George. How does that sound? Anyone getting excited about that? Yeah, I think that's really good. I mean, I think, I think uh, Junior was, it was a, like Junior will be on sort of the next up NA team. And I think Nows had has a good foundation for that. Um and uh Nouns are they're I mean, a lot of these NA teams are just I don't know. I I think it's great they stay NA for the time being, but everyone just has to get better because like yeah, obviously it's... otherwise only we're me and Jason are gonna be the only ones talking about that. I know it's exciting within like the context of the NA scene. Like but this you guys can get this... excited about it, get excited. You're I'm not. To. I'm not that. I'm not that excited about oh, okay. it. I think it's All like right. a pretty good. It's a good move, but yeah, it's not like I was more excited about NRG coming back in and staying and staying with an NRG. I, I wasn't. I wasn't excited look, about sorry. that at all. They look I wasn't really excited good. about that at all. What would you have? The done? lineup or the team? Well, or the, the lineup. The org coming back yeah. is great. The would lineup have, that they put together is not good. What would you have done with the lineup if you couldn't go outside of NA, or do you think about it? If you stay in NA. Yeah. If you stay in NA. Uh, I'd have to. I mean, I don't think it's. This is the lineup. The lineup is Daps, Breezy, OC, Fang, and Hex. Yeah, because so that part was OC. actually hard for me. I, I was like, it. yeah, I understand is, not is. liking this team on its face necessarily, but like, I like that they're in NA. And if you stay in NA, how do you get better players? I think they needed like a different entry fragger, maybe like. I mean, you've taken I anyone from maybe, M80. Maybe free Kazoid. M80. Like Swisher, for example. Swisher, Swisher, if you could take players from other teams, uh, I would have been wanting to get Swisher. That would have been someone there, I would have been I think, I think Malbs, Malbs was a big grab for, for M80. I like yeah, Malbs, Malbs as a player. Uh, excellent yeah. player, yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know, to be honest. I don't know what they had available to them, but I'm just like looking at it right out of the gate. I know when they were putting that together and I was hearing the report of like, I don't I don't want Daps playing. Um, I know he still thinks he can he can make it happen. I would I would just have stuck with with him as a coach if I were him. I think Breeze is like one of those risks where it's like, all right, Breeze, like you better show me something. You've got like three three to four to five months to like show me you that give you him can that long. Damn, dude, he I was mean, number one in NA on cycle. Premier in the in the game. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. Stark was the hero. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's that's just what it, like because like his his disappearance from like the, during the online era. I don't know what happened. He, I haven't seen a player drop off that hard since like Snacks. Like Snacks was uh, like amazing and then just like disappeared. And Breeze did the same thing during the online era. So I don't know. It's it's hard in, in North America, but I, this team this so team. They're just typing an online or oh, interesting Moses. How how it turns how it changes when it's an NA yeah. Player. You were tweeting it's, just the other week. Who, who, who am I hyping up online? Breezy. Who am I no, I said he disappeared during the online era. I'm not hyping okay. him up. He just he just went missing off the map. So if he doesn't show anything quickly, it's like okay, time to move on and start building that, up some some different talent. That literally means he's a good player. Like that's literally the only evidence we have. Well, online, you, di yeah, disappear. If you disappear during the online period, that just means you can't play against noobs. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, he had his chance when we came back, and it's it was it was it was. Ugly. It was not yeah, fun to watch. It, it was not good. Fun. It really <laughs> it hasn't been fun since, yeah. has it? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah?
What's up? No, Jason? I just I don't know. Like again, like these NA changes are like cool within like the the context of NA only events, but none of them are none of them are capable of competing against the European teams. Even the tier like the top NA competition at the moment, outside of like your liquids, outside of you know complexity, um, is basically like tier three of Europe. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Maybe tier that four. And that's and it's going to be that way for a while. Yeah, it's, it's gonna it's gonna be a long road back. But Australia is like tier five of Europe, so you know at least you you got a one up on us there. That's Jeff, true. We know? can we can if we put it in context, it does feel a lot better. Yeah, right. So yeah. one right. in one year, Steel can join NRG, and Dabs can coach. How? But no, Steel said he doesn't want to play professionally. He made like a tweet the other day saying he wants to do like desk work and stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, he did. Um, and how old is he? He should have to do of... no. Fuck that. He does ten years of being banned. Then he has to do three years of mandatory IGL service to NA. Then he can. <laughs> retire if he wants to he was I mean, 34 this year be. man on the 20th of december he's 34 he's my age he has great skin that he's, poor guy's cheating coaches got unbanned before he got unbanned oh my god yeah, yeah it's been sidelined for so long it's fucking insane yeah. isn't it i mean but, but like joel, also like joel didn't even get banned he just got like a slap on the wrist slap on the wrist yeah I but think E6 like really I, I, good, I, so. honestly, I wish. I mean, I'm never going to blame him because I think, in some regards, especially when you're when he's Basically 34 and, and he's been out of it, like that route of going content creation and streaming and FPL and making videos and trying to do desk work is probably a little bit more <laughs> reliable in terms of a career, in terms of money, than like rolling the dice on and competing with an NA team. But I think Steele would would be someone who would make a really really cool option for a coach if any of the NA teams wanted to go that route. So you don't want he'd... Daps in the server, but you want Steel in the server. I would take Steel over Daps in a heartbeat. Steel is four years older than Daps. I would take Steel over Daps in a heartbeat. Okay, four, four years. Want to just say it one more time for the back? Said. You want to go over it again? No, <laughs> I, no. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just making, just pointing out a couple I, facts look, here. I'm, I know it sounds like I'm kind of like shitting on Daps, and I guess I am in a way, but I, I actually really <laughs> like Daps. I just don't think. Okay. In, the, in this server, I don't think it's gonna, it's gonna do nearly as much as him as a coach. I can help you out as well. Like I've seen Daps at events for like six, seven years. He's been talking about retiring. He wanted to go more into the business side of things for like so long and then just kept getting pulled back to be an IGL because they needed somebody. But I think he's always been sort of flirting with the idea of not playing anymore, like just doing something in the in the background to help teams or whatever. And I think also they probably tried to offer automatic and then didn't get him. So that might be a reason why they have Daps, right? Yeah, I heard they were going for him, and, and he kind of mentioned the same thing, didn't he? He was like, I'm going to wait and review my options after yeah. January or something like that. I mean, Automatic would be a good player to get if his if his heart is still in it, obviously. And Automatic, someone who you almost feel like of, of everyone in NA is like, you deserve to be on a competitive team because everyone likes Automatic. He's super smart player, super strong, and he's just kind of out in the winds. Mm. All right, you guys done about North America? You got anything else you yep. want to say about your pain? You brought this upon us, but I did, yeah. I did. Yeah, no, but I wanted you, to see. You're steering the ship. You're, I wanted you're... to see where we ended up. I wanted yeah. to see what happened. Thank but you. It was, it's all right. It was good. I'm glad to hear a little about North American Counter Strike. You know, we, we got to do it sometimes. All right, uh, let's uh, move our attention here. We can go from the recent news to what is just more recent news, but under a different headline. Uh, so the last events of 2023 have come to a close, at least the big ones, not just these online events that are going to be going on for a couple of weeks longer as people don't have fucking Christmas apparently uh but uh look we did have esl challenger going on over there in atlanta and uh vp were able to scoop that one up with fame i believe it was being the mvp uh yeah. that was a grand final against apex that was over in the blink of an eye so uh that was quite a quick one now i guess we went from north american to north american jason how far away are you from atlanta uh i'm a two-hour flight okay so not close at all so no. you, you weren't thinking of making your way down there you did go to the fragadelphia land, i went to fragadelphia in chicago that was a two-hour drive atlanta's a little bit more of a hike okay uh yeah. and what do you what do you know about atlanta uh hot. it's 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 wonderful it's hot it's got a lot of traffic you got a cool nightlife though um well it's got a lot of strip clubs and it's got a big gay population so <laughs> okay take from that what you will all right. At we least learned. half of those things were great. Yeah. We, we learned we learned about we learned a bit about Atlanta with Jason, so that's nice. Uh but there's a wrote. restaurant we used to go to uh during E League that had a big uh wooden carved cock right at the bar. Just a or, yeah. Uh, okay. Or all right. How, yeah, how big, Jason? If you had to use your hands to show us how big was the cock? Try not to get splinters. Okay, so it wasn't it's that like a it's like a healthy half impressive. torso. Yeah. It's a half torso. Okay. A, ha a half torso. Or okay. a full torso. Well an upper torso. <laughs> a half torso. 
<laughs> oh, I'm trying to envision. Like, is it down the center? Like, what are we? Where? How are we split? Anyway, it, I'm not sure that okay, really matters. James, here. Okay, let's cut to the chase. James joins Cloud Nine. All their problems are solved. Oh, but then okay, but then you can replace Boomage and Hobbit, and then you add Donk. Oh, and then you add Donk. Just yeah. add any VP, right? <laughs> any oh yeah, you could add Fame fames, or Flip. Yeah, fame, yeah. Or flips, yeah. yeah. Both yeah. are good. Yeah. Both are pretty good. I think that's I mean, a nice Norbert way. Norbert was fucking sick, and and that fucking oh, whatever that's true it's called. Too. Yeah, he turned uh, turn his life about, around. No, but... Talking about Cox, the the event with uh with the chicken. Uh, Beppo. Yeah. Was, was it Daha Dasha? Da, I don't but, know. Beppo Boom Dasha. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Dasha Lord, gotcha. you've, got, you've got that imprinted uh, on your burn. He's, my yeah. <laughs> he's still he's still under contract to mention that it was... every seven minutes. Dude. <laughs> okay. Look. 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 Okay. Dude. First of all, we don't know. Obviously. Okay. For all of us who have been doing events for a long time, we've done like star ladders, like all these events where we've had to do ad reads mid game and stuff or yep, desks yeah. or whatever it is. So when I saw this originally, I was like, okay, this is kind of just like nostalgia almost. Like, wow, this is be fun. We'll we'll make it funny. Like we'll make it funny. And then it was like map five of the grand finals in overtime and don't got a 4k and scrawny had to go and uh bet boom dodge <laughs> oh like, we were just like god damn it like listen we show up to cast and it determined organizers they get to pick if they sold sponsors and we have to do ad reads that's part of the job we you never want it to be that bad but it's not like we can argue against money that they've already made by selling the ads right yeah. like we're just there to read them so we didn't want we kind of they came up to, one of the to be fair to them uh uh fissure who were doing production they sort of came from dota and they, it's like their first csgo event and they one of the guys came up to them and he's like is this weird like everybody on um the forums are saying like this is uncomfortable to like listen to these ad reads during the game <laughs> and i was like yeah it's a, it's like we've never had that for like many years and there's no current organizers that made you read ads in the middle of games so you probably shouldn't do that you should do it like before the game, halftime, and then at the end, but there's no break in the middle of these games. So we gave them the advice to change it for the future and told them that this is something we that people have done a long time ago. People aren't used to that now. And so I think they got the message. But yeah, they already sold the ads. They already made the agreements and they probably shouldn't have made them the way they did. So it is what it is. Um, that if they had an analyst sort of desk, it could have taken some of that burden off of you guys as well. That too. Uh, it was, I, I think even... it was their first experience with English talent is what I understood. So they just started with this and then the desk is maybe but for I, the future i, I want to know who got to keep the shirt you or henry <laughs> <laughs> well i looked better in everything that henry wore. So. <laughs> <laughs> he was upset with the the clothing i thought it was pretty cool to at least it was very nice creatively to be at that event because apart from some of the logistical and technical errors being on a set you know like we have yeah. at summits and other things having a stylist as well as having the set designers would come in and change the props every day like day three they added a literal fireplace to you know it's just the english casting room so they really did do there were people there that were creatively doing a really great job to make things feel interesting and fun in the building so that part was great we'll say that yeah definitely uh so, some some teething room in other regards there but we were talking about vp who prof brought us here to by talking about norbert's performance of that event i don't know how many people ended up watching that event because of some of the things i know some people on reddit were having a hard time with that but regardless mm -hmm. we're talking about fucking esl challenger atlanta and i've followed dastan on instagram and he, just every fucking three days it's like dastan's in a new country i'm like what the fuck a <laughs> vp are always seem like they're somewhere new doing something crazy so um, I think this type of a win for them, they're at fifth in the HLTV World Rankings right now. I don't really know how to measure them properly against a lot of other teams. We know this is a team that is always going to be difficult to put away. They're always very annoying to they play against. They are third in Val's rankings. Okay, so yeah. I, I, yeah, uh, Nero put out that... Uh, yeah, that I got this right now. Yep. I think like 10th in ESLs. Yep. Which I found kind of funny because uh, Nixon uh, tweeted something about like VP going to ESL Challenger events and like building their ranking. While well, like ESL values it the least out of all of the rankings, kind of ironic. Yeah, well, the, the, this is this is the thing we have right now—a bit of a disparity within those rankings right across the board. I guess the only one—I wonder if it's going to the change. only one that's really good is HLTVs. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm curious. Answer the next come, topic. Shocking. But yours only gets players bonuses. So I, like, whereas you know the Valve one, it gets them into to different positions at the major, and the ESL one. So I wonder if the ESL one is still going to have any value come 2025. I mean, the big disparity is Spirit. Yeah. Spirit is sixth in Valve's rankings, 13 on HLTV, and 20th on ESL. Yeah, that's interesting. Jason, what's going on with your webcam? Are you cool? 
looks perfectly it's, it's fine. Good work here. Whoa, what did He's always looked like a work of art. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of well, cool. See, we'll see if that All rectifies right. itself. Yeah, let's see. All right, so I just wanted to have that little little topic. We've covered yeah. that off. Uh, I think but... uh, just to say, I think uh, going into it, I was I was I had some higher hopes from like Monty and complexity. Complexity for me, was honestly, I had those for. were the two, two teams, as I said before, and together with VP that are like, hmm. They complexity can be just needs the bigger guys, guys, man. They they just have too many small guys. guys. Yeah, like Halzert's their biggest guy, but he's still like pretty short. I think they just don't have any. Big guys, no big presence there and there. I think it's really holding them back. They just are too small. Are we talking about ph physically? Yeah, physically. I mean, so you're saying they need yeah. to hit the gym? They're, They're lacking presence. They lack presence. They lack presence. The I think Alish, Alish brought, he's like a firecracker. Like he brought some energy to like when they lose. Obviously, it's probably going to be hell if Alish is beside you. He's going to tell you why they lost, but then you're going to get better and then you're actually going to win more. But now they're just missing like just like a sizable man to be on this team when they walk around events to have more presence to like oh, not like even. Memphis. Exactly, a Semphis like Taz as a coach of G two, or like you know another one of the VP members to come over to just be with them while they're walking around. I think it matters. So we need a toll because nothing else will fix complexity. They got James. They got an, uh, like the biggest upgrade ever. They do have James Irwell, yeah, he's, but you don't see him all the time. You don't. See yeah, him. we should see him more. Yeah, that that would solve the problem. I the complexity are the ones who disappointed me the most. So this they lost to the Mongols three times. Um, which look I. <laughs> I, no, I don't want to. I don't want to knock the Mongols because I think that they're a good team. I don't know where they keep finding these new players from. Fucking Senzu being now in. This I think in Mongolia. Well, right. yeah, at a, at a land cafe, I'm sure they just rolled in and went, "Who the fuck wants to come on an international trip?" You come right? with but me. <laughs> regardless, they, they they're playing good Counter Strike still. But the thing is, and I and again, I don't want to detract from their performance. I just want to talk about the slide from complexity. You're in the first CS2 event in Sydney. You're looking like you're playing some good CS against Phase. And now, towards the tail end of the year, you've had some absolute stinkers of results, and it's just completely put your position in World Counter Strike in jeopardy. If they had a strong event here, they were able to make it to the semifinals, the grand final, have a have a strong looking team. Okay, cool. We go into the next year and go complexity or a team that we have to actually keep on our you know watch card. But now, I don't give a fuck, mate. You 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 bought you really just fucked up the tail end of the year. So with this status quo of Counter Strike being all over the place, complexity aren't one to watch for me anymore. It's like well maybe, but they've shown. <laughs> Shown some bad stuff. I, I I don't look at it as harshly. I, there's still a team to watch, but I think it it really hurts like the image of starting to build them up as like someone who can challenge for a trophy and like yeah, a they're not a contender, contender right? team anymore. They, they go from being a contender to a really just like a dangerous team that you have to get through who can who can upset who can make a kind of slight playoff run. But it takes away that that feeling of them being able to actually challenge for for a tournament victory. I'll tell you what though, I mean it's going to stay that way if Grim and Floppy can't figure out how to remain consistent in terms of being you know the second or third second and third player on this team or you know second and fourth like one of those guys needs to get consistent and being right up there with the liege and they need to be able to have that because i mean when you're looking at the performances even in some of those losses that jt was locking at this event if you have jt as an in-game leader kind of fragging and performing the way he did at the event um and having some of the maps that he did and you're and you're not able to do anything at the event like that's that's rough because JT put some fucking work in as IGL. I wonder what the, the fall off is put down to, though, because of its old lack of motivation at the end of the year. That's not the type of team that can have that excuse. Like, that's I, not the type of team that can tell their foot off the I, gas. I remember this quote a long time ago from Hiko, and he was talking about like NA players versus EU players. And he just said, like, it's not just that EU teams have better teamwork, but EU individuals make better decisions. And I thought that at first that hurt because that's something that you can't really fix just by like, you know, fixing, fixing things as a team. You just got to be a smarter per You got to go back to the beginning of your life and like get a better education or something. That's like impossible to overcome. But then I thought, no, there's probably, there's probably something to that. Like individuals also making better decisions. I mean, and I, I do think that like on the low end of this team, like Jason's saying, there is some inconsistency when it just comes to even decision-making. Let's let's be real though too. Like the, the some of the games they lost against Mongols, like they played, they played, they played like... Uh, Horrible Counter Strike, but it wasn't like an indictment of their overall game plan. They played some sit like they got. I think they got Ninja Diffuse twice. Um, I think they lost like a like a four on two eco like a eco round in the second in the series against Mongols. They lost like three of those rounds that are literally impossible to lose unless you're an <laughs> NA team. Or G2. And, or G2. Or G2. I just yeah. wanted to say, yeah. we like, want they, you guys they, to do things that we could never imagine. <laughs> and they, they had literally three of them in one map. 
Um, so, I mean, I think it was like, it, it seemed like one of those, like m they were off their game mentally and not as, as fucking focused, which isn't an excuse. It's just like, you know, I think if they play, I, I don't know, it's kind of hard to say that too. Like, I was going to say if they play Mongols again, but they did play them twice at this event. They lost all three <laughs> best maps. Best of so. one and a best of three. Yeah. yeah. I think it was, it was obviously a very, very bad rough weekend that, that is, uh, that they're not going to be pleased about. But I mean, look, if you want to, if you want to be a glass half full kind of guy, which everyone in the world knows I am, um, I say, this is one of those opportunities where Elise really gets to show his value in terms of leadership because his value in stepping into this team as a leader and getting them to this point is huge. And I think how he reacts and how he helps this team bounce back after a devastating loss is going to be just as important as kind of the attitude he brought into the team when he first joined. And this is where Elise has to overcome some of the historical aspects aspects of him as a player within liquid where um his attitude is sometimes bent to their detriment and he can't afford to be that he has to be like the guiding principle of the team now with that experience that he has and with the trophies that he has and the stature that he has as a player uh, this is one of those things where if you can find a way to get this team to rebound as a liege you you gain so much more respect from the team and from the players and, and this team can can kind of bounce back and get started in 24 on the right foot yeah, I'll hopefully. say this. Oh yeah, I'll say this too. I because I love this on, on like a, on like a grander scale of the overall scene. I fuck love. I fucking love watching teams like the Mongols come in and just beat the crap out of yeah, any teams. Sure. I, I, I absolutely love it because you sit there in your NA and, and look, I, I do it too from time to time, just because I look around at the scene and what the scene used to be five six years ago and what we're missing now, and it's like, you know. We, we want some more, we need more events. We need to have like a proper circuit in NA. We need these teams to be more active at tournaments. ESL and Blast have taken all the events away that they did in NA. Like we need those back. But then Mongols comes in. And like you said, Chad, they've made like plenty of roster changes and found diamonds in the rough. They're in fucking Mongolia and coming in and having better improvement over time and finding better replacements for individual players than we've seen NA do since like 2017. Like what's going the opportunity on? Opportunity means more to them though. Like that's that's the thing, right? And I know that shouldn't be the excuse, but it really does. Like the opportunity to those guys means a whole lot more to them just from where they're from, right? The fact yeah. they get to go and see the world, it, it's it, it it's literally life changing money for them. And I've seen it firsthand by losing to them back in the fucking day, man. I saw what thirty grand after an RMR win. Well, it was a minor win back then. Did to them, but I, I think that's it. Like it's the hunger for it, and that. That's something which you as an individual, especially if you're competing in an elite level team, need to be able to keep up yourself. And as like wanky as that feels, like we're all, you know, all this this mental health bullshit or, you know, fun, uh, this stuff is real. Like, especially when everything is just a fucking mindset. Like if you're a professional player at the top end of Counter-Strike and you want to make sure that you can compete at the top end, you need to have the mindset to be able to do it. You can't just fucking coast. You can't just take your paychecks. Like you need to actually be able to compete or you're not going to be there for too much longer. So, I would say, yeah, I would say though that like the higher paid players in North America are worth it like most for the most part they're actually like really good players like naf twist a leash and that, oh, sure. of, that yeah. tier. on the lower tier though i think like you know these some of these guys in na are really are playing for the opportunity to be able to do this full time i, I think that one thing for sure is that they yeah, other regions maybe more so but i don't think that that's actually the main reason for na for you know why they haven't improved or like why mm -hmm. they can't but i i think that like some regions definitely have better igls like denmark for example like probably three of the best igls currently right now just that's not a coincidence right and i think in na we don't have that sort of culture of creating great leaders i think most of them have been like canadian somehow or like you know once in a while you get a good one and then you think about blitz as an example from the mongols they've got like a pretty they've got a gem with him like he's a he's like a legit chess player like he's got a, a legit FIDE rating. He's a FIDE master, 2000 blitz, 2000 over the board, um, like in every sort of every category. And I feel like that translates probably really well to Counter-Strike. Mm. Just enough chess experience on top of. And then, you know, he can kind of be like a James. Like he could take players who don't know a lot. Maybe he's a good teacher and make good players. But do we have any IGLs that even are comparable to blitz or any teams in NA that are coming up that, like I guess Walco on EG as an example of being close to that, but uh, not that many, not that many IGLs that we can compare to him. I think. Yeah, I no. Think we, Daps we, we, came back to NRG. There's no IGLs that. I mean, <sighs> the the other problem is too. Like, I mean, there's the NA has that severe problem where we have just enough veterans who don't want to like drop down and train up new talent and develop new talent. <laughs> 
but like you still want the veterans in the team. So like there's there's not really yeah I don't know. Let's not get back into the NA quagmire. It's it's a whole chicken We've and never egg been situation. Able to solve this one, have yeah. we? No. But I I do want to quickly just segue and then we'll get into some ads here because I think talking about Mongols is important and we are going to have like the RMR discussion a little bit later on. But I there, there, there's a whole uh, discourse going on in the moment about Oceania only getting one spot for the Asian RMR. Uh, and and Mr. Messioso, Graham Pitt with the double thumbs up, he explained that uh, sub-region slots in Arama are distributed evenly. If they cannot be fully distributed equally, they're given to regions within single highest world ranking teams. Uh, so that obviously doesn't make a lot of sense unless you know what I'm talking about. You guys can find it on Twitter. But essentially because of the way it was in the Valve rankings, like the Oshi, the Oceanic teams were towards like, I think like fourth or fifth or something like that, like further down. So they only end up getting one spot. Um, where I wanted to go with this is if Greyhound are the team to get that spot, which you would assume. So now they've added Dex to the roster. Um, it's still going to be fucking hard for them to get one of the two major spots required because you'd think if Lin vision get through, if Tyler get through and the Mongols get through, that's fucking difficult. Like those three teams in the last six months have had some decent notoriety to their names with different results. So uh, I'm. I'm a. I just wanted to bring this one up. Just said it's going to be quite difficult for um, the Aussie boys to make the major. I think it's going to be a tough one. I think I'm it's going to be a, a real hard one. I'm real racist these days. Like I want everyone to have a national team. I want all to be represented at the major if possible. I want more opportunities. For You're them. a nationalist. I'm a nationalist. It's a better sounding word. I'm just going to help you out there. <laughs> Instantly demonetized. Don't even. <laughs> Let me try. Good one, Jason. Save the day there. Yeah, I do my best. That's what I want. I want everyone in every country to be amazing. <laughs> yeah, to... <laughs> I'm a real fascist. Uh, is uh, what, what happens, Chad? What if we get uh, is this is this time for JKS to just be like, you know what? I'm coming back to the boys for one last ride. Let's get him to let's get to the major. I've tried. I tried already. I think I think he's got other aspirations at the moment, but hopefully uh, we can get there. We'll try. We'll, if Greyhound don't make it to the major next year, then maybe we can make it happen. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Let, let's go to an ad break, and we'll come right back, and we'll uh, get into talking about the Blast World Finals. <laughs> Best esports odds. VIP program and a variety of bonuses. Fast and easy withdrawals. Bet on every possible CSGO matching tournament. As well as any other esports game. Only on 22Bet. Do you want to change your boring old skins for awesome new ones fast without losing a lot of value and without the risk of getting scammed? Go to TradeIt.gg and safely trade your items within 60 seconds. Just select which items you want to trade from your inventory and choose whatever skin you want from TradeIt's inventory. Click Trade, verify the trade on Steam, and you're good to go. With the biggest inventory available for the lowest trading fees on the market, TradeIt.gg is your go-to whenever you want to play with new skins. Oh, baby, we're back from the break. Thank you for sticking with us. Thanks to our sponsors making this possible. Let's keep this show on the road. All right, I wanted to jump into talking about the uh, Blast World Finals. That was uh, the big boy event that we just had going on over there in the Abu Dhabs. I think that's how they're saying it on the streets. Uh, Mohan, you were there. You were doing the business. You were getting it done. The rest of us were... Wait, Prof, were you there? Or were you... I was there. Oh shit! You were okay, yeah, but Londres was casting. You were, you were, you were not. You were casting. just, you were just there. I was just there. I, I, was, I was, I was just one of you know. But it, how, how, how racism, was it? Londres? We have classism. <laughs> you know, what else we have? What do you even <laughs> do at these events, Prof? Oh it's no, top secret. <laughs> uh, never, I do what's time. what's this described as lobbying. I ah. do some lobbying. Mm. Do some networking, uh, and I sometimes do some drinking as well. Okay. Big money deal. They go hand in hand. Well, yeah. Lord, is this one you didn't have to do too many crazy ad reads? But uh, yeah. look, the I, I missed the grand final because that's the time my flight from Australia was departing to come back here to cold 
Malta and I love Europe. Um, I'm not miserable at all. Uh, so so what? Sell the final to me. How was it? Oh, okay. So well, for me, uh, uh, after the fall final, it was vitality phase fall final. So when they came into this final again, I said privately to everybody, I, I thought vitality were going to destroy phase. Without you know, I didn't want to have to like. I'm cab. I'm not on the desk, so I'm not gonna bring that up, right? Uh, but I really thought that Vitality would destroy FaZe, and they pretty much did. So I think that's for a few reasons. I think it's, can, in retrospect, kind of an expected result. I think it was very fun to watch them play that well. And I think, uh, for me, that solidifies Apex as IGL of the year. Wow, okay. Yeah. Well, fuck, yeah, I saw you, most you threw that about in, in the cast. Yeah, yeah. because well, I didn't realize it at that moment, but thinking about the fact that he won, he's two for two with Mezzi, he won with Flamesy at Gamers 8. He's won without Zonic, which a lot of people said, oh, here's the follow-up. Now you need Zonic. Everyone realize on Zonic. Well, watch that bitch. Apex still here winning. <laughs> so Apex still winning. I think I was a number one Apex hater 2020. When he took a break, I said, don't come back. And when he came back and started winning, I was like, God damn, he's actually good. I was just joking. I did. I mean, don't come back as an IGL. I was really not looking forward to it. But yeah. then when he kept winning, I kept winning. Okay, okay. Carried by, oh, he's getting carried by Zaiwu. Zaiwu has a worse team than 2018 Simple. He's carrying a bunch of frauds. Then Spinks got better. I am Rio, Paris Major. Spinks has been the most improved rifler this year, in my opinion. It's at the top level, top, top level. I think he's best in role, even better than Rops, actually. And I think that uh, obviously Zaiwu helps a ton, but it doesn't make. Uh, I think there's something to be said about the fact that Apex could have had Flamesy and Mezzi come into the team, two players who could have lived with the word potential floating around their heads for the rest of their careers and no one would have noticed, even though we knew they're good. You know, lots of players, we know they're good and could have had an excuse for why his team won one tournament in the year, two tournaments like they did since 2019, but they didn't. They won two back-to-back -back events, three for Flamesy, two for Mezzi, bunch for Apex. I think he's done an incredible job. Yeah, all right, I agree with all that. I think that I, yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't a believer when I saw him picking up the in-game leader mantle. I think it's been a crazy arc that he's been on. I think it's fantastic understanding what he I needs mean, to do. I mean, let's let's not overwrite history. The first two years of him being an in-game leader, a year and a half of him being an in-game leader was an absolute disaster. Yeah, like it just was. Like he he improved massively. I don't know. I don't know what changed or what it was, but uh, I mean, he he stepped up in terms of figuring out exactly how he was going to call and how he liked to play the game, and um, in terms of in terms of getting people on the same page of how he wanted to play. Like it's it's obvious it's been a market one, but the early the early days of it was was gross. I'm with you though. Is in game leader of the year probably. Uh, or for sure, but have to be, um, right? with, with with what he's done. You got to give a shout out, I think, in this regard to um, to Vitality Management. I think you know, with some of the roster changes that have come in, with losing Zonic, with losing losing Magisk, they've they've done a good job of replenishing that, bringing Flames in, um, and then eventually bringing Mezzi in as well. I think are incredible finds for them, where they've gotten they've gotten away with losing the greatest coach of all time, um, a Hall of Fame you know player in Magisk, and and not not missing a beat. So I think the management of Vitality as well has done done a great job getting the right players in there. All right, well, Prof, you were there as well, and they've just spoken a lot about Vitality in the whole and giving away some accolades here. But mm -hmm. the uh, the actual Counter Strike, you know, well, the, you are, you're on the ground lobbying. Uh, yeah. Would you were, were you lobbying for Vitality or for Phase? Uh, for Phase, I would say. Really? Yeah. You wanted to see Phase pick up the W? Why you big? No, frozen I mean, uh, uh, you know, just uh, Phase. I think it would be more interesting because now we have really okay. Vitality. Kind of taking dog. it away, and it's very, it's very clear, you know, who's the best, at least at the moment. Uh, also, across the year, I think it's. But it's good, don't you think it's good? We have a favorite leading into next year. Are right, we going to Katowice? Vitality of the top dog, but we know who's nipping at the heel. Yeah, next phase, yeah. But, then... but at the same time, I think like Phase with Frozen doing this in their first tournament, I think this is a really good result overall. Not really surprising, knowing their like kind of reputation, and how they usually handle this yep. pretty, pretty well, but. Still, pretty good result. I, I, I think uh, it was an interesting final from the perspective of like every phase game was like super tight, and then every vitality game was a blowout. So it'd be like, hmm, you could just say like all phase are bad, but that's not really how it is. Like they are just like one of those teams that always finds a way back into the game. So I was curious if that would maybe happen in the final, but it, 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 it was never there. It was just I, never there. I had one more thing about that. Like in the first like ten rounds of Inferno, I saw what I saw was like Harrigan in 2020, 
where you know that like IGL scout meta, Kerrigan, Glaive, like mm-hmm. a lot of IGLs are even, even yeah. yeah, running out through smokes, dying for a kit, dying to see four players outside on nuke, and then everyone rotated, taking over lobby, pushing ramp or whatever. That they were kind of doing that, and I was like, that kind of is not in fashion right now. And there was a few rounds where it got them a few rounds because Kerrigan was getting a very aggressive lurk kill, pushed through smoke, even caught Zaiwu off one time. But after those four rounds, they just got stomped, and I was had this feeling. For me, when I looked at it, that like they were playing as the underdog. I didn't feel like Faze were playing, thinking they were going to win the game. And I don't know what their thoughts are. Mm. Obviously, Vitality are a very hard team to play against. But it didn't feel like they had a default-based, sustainable round-based game plan that they felt could go deeper than Vitality. Because it felt like they were just sort of taking more risks. Who are the cops coming for right now? Yeah, know. GTA is it's, going it's Toronto, the so it could be anybody. Yeah. Could okay. Be anybody. No, I get that around here too, but it's just a little bit late for that. All right, that's fair enough. Okay. Yeah, no, I, that's interesting, right? Because like I said, I didn't get to watch the final. Uh, I did watch some of the group stage games in the lead up and some of the other playoff matches, but I didn't get to see the final because of uh, the when it was all going down. But I, I, I wonder if that's because he felt like his calls needed to, you know, he just needed to call his team into position because they didn't have everything refined as what you'd hope because they've just added a player, right? Which that's interesting. That's an interesting little uh, viewpoint on it it. it. it didn't feel like FaZe uh, individuals in that grand final game were getting the impact they, that we normally see them get when I was watching it. Like, I think especially on like Inferno, like the kind of like the highlights of things that got round started for FaZe was like Kerrigan in B with a MAC-10 catching a couple nice timings to open up the bomb site. But we didn't see that same production across the board from guys like Rops and, and Rain and obviously Frozen even standing in like enough individual production to get things moving on the map. So I think they probably at, at the time, it, I would imagine in the match, they probably felt like individually a step below and felt like they needed to overcome that with a little bit of like randomness, a little bit of like chaos and, and obviously with some calling and it just obviously didn't work out zywu put on a master class on inferno zywu is such yeah, a fucking MVP beast on the that event. yeah yeah, that's that's good to see the like I think that for me I like the way that the year has ended with Vitality on top because it's their year, right? You got the major, you have all those things that you mentioned before, uh Launders do with all the roster changes. So and then I think it puts a nice little target on their back and a nice little storyline for us to run with going into 2024. Um, especially with like the major being early on in the year, Katowice being the second event out the gates, essentially. We do get to wet our feet with uh, the blast groups just to see how kind of everybody's faring. We still have a few more roster changes that need to come into fruition. As I look down the the ranks, though, right? So we got Vitality first, Phase second. Uh, there's no point us talking about. We already spoke about Cloud Nine. We we all I think we all agree they need a fucking Orpha, uh, unless, unless Jason's got his devil on his shoulder. And that's not the team anymore. And heroic same situation. So the ones to talk about, I, I guess, are G2, Mouse, and Navi. Uh, what was what was everyone's thoughts on on G two right? Nexus standing in, he had a couple of good clutches and stuff. He didn't look completely like fish out of the water. A new team, they had that good atmosphere. Hooksy yelling like normal. What was the take of G two while getting to uh, to 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 be man on the ground there, Launders? Did you have any key uh, takeaways with them? I did. I think that I think it's easy to be hyped when you're winning, and I think there seemed to be this undercurrent of criticism about JKS that he wasn't hyped in like all their moments to help them get back to like or be a good positive atmosphere. But like when G2 are losing, Nexa wasn't really doing that necessarily. And I don't blame him for that. And I don't know. I, it sucks for Nexa because obviously if you get called up to G2, G2 take the fucking job, right? If but I think that uh, the shoes he has to fill, I think if he's not going to do it on a rating basis or a fragging basis, then I don't really necessarily see him as he's not the same tier of positive guy as like Jax and like yeah. maybe uh, the JL. You know, at JL, exactly. Those are the two prime examples. So, Picking Nexa up to be a positive guy on the team, it's sort of a strange concept to me. Like, he wouldn't be on that necessarily. He's, not, he's never struck me as a negative person, but... There are some really interesting narratives, though, that are starting to spawn out of this whole, like, JKS situation. It's quite fun to yeah, read them. I, I, <laughs> one thing I will say for sure is I was very surprised by how well he integrated initially and on G2. I was, like, thinking, okay, they'll survive this. But then there were a couple of spots, particularly CT Inferno uh, playing Pit, and a couple of other spots where I thought JKS would have won this map. So I think that he can't be as good as JKS in certain positions. And he's also playing new roles that he only played years ago in certain positions. So I don't expect him to, even once he learns them, be better than JKS in those roles. I don't think he or anybody else even thinks that that's necessarily going to happen. Um, and then I don't think that he's going to be a Jax or JL DMA sort of cheerleader for the roster either. So I don't think that this ends up being a roster that works, though I will say 
better than I expected originally. Yeah. What about, I was going to say, what about you, Prof? Because I know that you uh, you weren't sold on this move initially. Have you no, been I mean, swayed I, at all? I kind of understand it better now. And I, I don't, I think like, obviously like the pos positivity is one aspect. I think you can also just say just the energy. I think if you say energy, I think that's a fair thing that Next is bringing because like just being in the room when they're mm -hmm. playing, it is, there, there is more of it. There is more talking going on. Like it is, JKS, even if he was talking, you wouldn't hear him in the room. That's for sure. Like he's not really a, you know, a hype man. Yes. Also a honeymoon though, right? Come the yeah. fuck on. I'm just saying. <laughs> what are we doing I'm just, here? I'm just saying, I understand that angle. I still think, first of all, I, I think like G2 did an awful job of communicating about this because like if they wanted to say, they could have said JKS is an amazing player, but we needed something else to make the other pieces work. And we can't remove any of the other pieces because they're untouchable. Uh, they could say that in a nicer way, but that is the truth. So we decided to remove JKS and uh, we hope that other players will, you know, fill the gap, you know, bridge that difference between like JKS and EXA. That exists fucking obviously. And he was just put in this position where he needs to be fucking JKS essentially, which he cannot be ever. And also but be you could be fucking somebody that hot. Yeah, and also opti optimistic, <laughs> positive calling, a uh, secondary calling, and also like being one of the like individually best anchors in the game. Like that, that's that's impossible. It's stupid. So um, I do, I do see it now. I understand it, but I don't. I don't think it's enough. Like I don't think it's. I don't. I understand the logic, but I think that the players that they picked to change are not going to give what they need. To be no, I mean, my, my view of this move when it happened was this is, if anything, at best, like a lateral, it's like a change of a player that doesn't actually improve the team significantly over what it was before the change. You might get some different elements into it, but it's not going to make them, it's not going to make them jump up and be a significantly better team than they were before, or find some, you know, I guess the big knock on G2 th throughout this whole year was consistency of like winning the Katowice and Cologne and not being able to carry it through to the events between those this doesn't change anything. And I didn't see anything at this event that made me think that this was some significant upgrade that was going to change my opinion of, of G2. So um, it's, it's whatever. I think it's fitting if we're, we've been having a conversation about the, the positive energy that he brings into a team is like, if that's the focal point of the conversation on Nexa coming into this roster, it's not a good move. Like it, it hasn't provided them any significant change in the way they play the game inside the server. <laughs> whatever like he can bring all the positivity in the world but i don't think it's going to increase the performance of g2 i i, I i'm not even going to say i was disappointed in their run it wasn't a, a great run it was it's just it's what what i expected i mean you beat you beat mal's 2-0 who has a stand-in you lose to phase you lose to navi who still has question marks on how this swapped to an international roster there's I mean, nothing there's no great positive takeaway from this for g2 that navi game was also a classic g2 Game. I love like, the clutch that they lost. That was my the, favorite uh, thing. That I've seen yeah, that was that time. was that was mental. That was that was actually really uh, stupid. That but that was embarrassing. That's but again, what that is the, like again, nothing's changed. <laughs> it's the G two we've known for years. Like, great, good change. I'm not gonna say anything. Everything I say gets taken out of context. So regarding this, we'll just. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna put my my hat in the ring here. But I will say, once you know that the guys in library. Because you killed your teammate, and you still keep running towards B as if you're hunting, as if he's going to be there. That you was just, unacceptable. You just man. fucking. You, what are you doing? That that's embarrassing as fuck. That is that was the dumbest shit I've fucking seen. It honestly doesn't make sense because if there's two guys staying alive, maybe you could be doing something greedy. But there's literally no reason. There's literally no one else. Uh, yeah, it just. It, yeah, yeah. You could. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, I have no. I have no idea what was going on that round. That was. Yeah. It was. That's just fucking dumb. Brains just disconnected from their bodies. Yeah. Where's moment. the fucking so, positive energy in that moment? Yeah. yeah that's well, the thing that game came down to like emotional composure and they both like when monacy had the 1v5 then g2 came back from 5-0 down to winning the map then alexi had the 1v3 defuse then uh navi came back in from 5-0 down and won the map literally yeah emotional yeah, yeah. damage don't yeah. get 1v3 ninja defused yeah, that... taz wrote that down i'm sure he's <laughs> No, <laughs> yeah. in the first meeting. I forgot that Taz is going to have to now be the fucking new one lead in the asylum over there. That's going to be that's going to be an interesting little project for Taz, isn't it? I wonder how it's going to fare.
going into little Serbia and having to, uh, you know, try and work. He he should have ended up over and fuck it. <laughs> what it is, prof. What are you talking about? A little the whole, Serbia, like the whole like management and everything, the That's mental fun. coach. The the core of the team, it's it just it is just it's a Serbian team. Were like, were they not allowed? Is. Were they not allowed to use him as a coach uh, due to like a roster lock or something at that event? I don't know either that or they just wanted to give one more to Swanee, but probably roster lock, I'd say. Yeah, because yeah. I, I mean, if if you're really trying to improve like yeah, energy with inside a team, why wouldn't you put Taz in there to hype up the boys during a timeout? You know, like Taz has got some fucking energy to get to. Yeah, if we're gonna if we're gonna have a talk about energy, that's I, true. I like Taz. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna last <laughs> six months in this team. If I'm completely honest, I I think this I is one of the like worst. Wait, why not? Why not? To make your I feel like it's gonna debut. be such a clash of everything, and there is like so much pressure always on G2, and he's been out of the game for a while on, on like a top level. Uh, I don't know. I I don't see him because people take him as like ex pro, therefore you know expert. I do see him more as a you know just he's, vibes guy he's a personality management coach that's yeah. i imagine that's what they brought him in for personality management handling disputes handling you know mindset going into games more than anything tactical i would imagine but they but they have a tactical in-game leader right so this is the thing like they yeah don't i that, think right? hooksy yeah. hooksy can carry that burden it's the same kind of thing with like a carrigan right like he's going to be able to it's great to be able to have other people to chip in with ideas but mm -hmm. they don't need people doing the game plan for them right they're, they're, they like doing that hooksy's a guy that loves to prepare for matches so um and i'm, I'm sure taz is going to have some some very valuable insights and in certain things but yeah i think it, it will probably be more just to to keep them uh in line uh what about navi We've mentioned them a little bit here. Uh, uh, is the team starting to grow on everybody a little bit more? Imma had a good map. That seemed to get some Romanian Counter-Strike fans excited. It's Let's always go. good when he has one good he's map. Still, he's still, in my <laughs> opinion, not a real... He's not really tier one compared to other people that are being, he's being compared to, I think. I, I hate to put it like that, but I don't think that he's as developed in his roles. He's only recently started being used well in the first place with Alexi, but it's actually gotten better now. But I don't think he's like... He's not like comparable to like he could had a great map versus Nico on Nuke, but I don't think that's that's not happening every day. If it no, well, does I, made change. A, I made a tweet during the event and I said that they don't have any certified stars. They have players who have shown potential who can be stars, like Bit for that patch when Navi were fucking sick. If he had kept that up, that form up, you know, as as a player and an anchor, he could be amazing, right? You had. Uh, yeah, you have Emma who had the amazing major run, but he hasn't been able to back that up. And it has just been this sporadic map every now and again. Or most of the time, he's just got a face like a slapped ass, just not looking like he's having a lot of fun, right? That's probably mm -hmm. changing now that Simple's not in the team with him, but whatever. He needs to he needs to deliver. He's in a role in the team where he has to deliver. And then Wonderful, well, we're only just seeing him on our screens at top-level Counter-Strike now. Can he develop? He's real quick. He's, he's quick like Monacy. Does he have what it takes? And I also think one of the issues I noticed with Na'Vi when watching them play is there a team who's going through the system and the approach that what Blade and Alexi want? They're not playing outside of the box. Whereas there was like this gear shifted during the G2 game on Anubis where G2 were like, okay, well, we're in this position. We're going to have this gear shift. Like you guys were highlighted while you were casting, I think. I think you were casting at Launders. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they just had this clear like gear shift. They were making more plays. They were making more moves. They were the mm -hmm. ones kind of dictating the game. Whereas Na'Vi... They were getting caught off by things that they knew were coming. There was like this the the T stairs smoke that came down. Wonderful still plays ahead of it to go pick A main and Hooksy pushes down canals and kills him in the back. And he's like, Well, how the fuck did he get here? It's like, of course you well, they, they, it was quite telegraphed they're doing an aggressive move, right? Mm -hmm. There was just this like lapse. They were just doing probably what they were told from Alexi, what they were to, there to expect. And I think that's something that Navi can grow into. Like I think they can grow into being, you know, star players or having more impact within games, but that's gonna take time. And they need to be comfortable willing to do that under the tutelage of Alexi and Blade. I don't yeah. think they're there yet. Like, JL is my favorite player to watch in that team. Yeah, me too. I think he makes the least mistakes. I, I actually believe that too. I think he, uh, I think Wonderful, Wonderful is just like on the right trend, perfect trend. He's really new. He's getting better. He's already like as fast as some of the competition he needs to be faster than. And he has some big moments. He can get better. And they're actually using him for more tactical openings. He's still very shy when it comes to like, all right, I'm going to try this. If I get, you know, one flash, I'm never going to say, Oh, I don't trust that flash. I'm going to stick around. He'll always fall back. So I think they get something out of him on good opening calls out of rounds, but he's still very like a soldier, I think, and not so much like a superstar, you know, a teeth gritting mindset or whatever. Um, I think Alexi's definitely got better over the year, and I would assume that's because of Blade. I think he's calling his best right now, but uh, they need, it needs to be even better. And five months ago or something, 
Immo was being used completely incorrectly. He was being used as an aggressive lurk on T side. He had no idea when to slow down, when to speed up. He was very bad at lurking. And now he's being used a lot better. He was the entry on some rounds on the T side of Anubis. He was lurking a little bit, but not too much. And I think he also had some roles like T side nuke where he was able to play with the pack and without the pack and beat up players like Nico. So I think he's showing a lot of improvement too. So in my opinion, Navi are improving on almost everybody. And JL is the guy who is probably the most impressive because he's also one of the guys who got overrated from Paris and had one good yeah. tournament and then got a contract. But he hasn't ever in that time been overly criticized for making bad mistakes because he never really made them. I think he's really smart. Yeah, it's interesting with the JL impact within the team. And that's the thing. I, I guess, yeah, he was, he did get think... the hype from the major, but he's, he's, I would say, more living up to it than most. Yes, Jason? I think this is just, I mean, I think it's the reality of when this EMA pickup from Navi happened, it was like the biggest, it was like the biggest post major like risk I feel like taken to a certain extent in terms of roster changes because he was someone that we do nothing about and then had an MVP level performance at the major and that showcased like all the potential he had, but we knew he wasn't going to be a finished player. And that was the big risk that Navi took. And at the moment, it hasn't really realized it. I think Maniac put it really good on the desk and, and, and summing up Navi's run was just like, we don't we don't really know what Ima's level is because all we have is like the ceiling. Like all we've seen is that one great event out of him. We're still waiting to see when that next step up in his development comes in. And that's where we can start judging a little bit more. Because if you just kind of judge it based off what we saw in Paris and then how it's been in Navi, obviously it's it's been a, it's it's not been good. In any, you don't in any get sense the call the up. So you don't get the call up to a team like Navi without the performance in Paris. Yeah, exactly. And, and, but I mean, you, we just have to see him continue to develop and flesh out the rest of his game because he's never he hasn't been in tier one for very long. Like it's still very early on. So they Navi made this roster change with his ceiling and his potential in mind. And then it's about the development game. And it, we still obviously in that development phase. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's just it is it is what it is. If you're at gonna... least you don't have to teach him to not be nervous, right? Like at least if you're mm -hmm. played and you see that happen and you go like, here's yeah. here's something we can carve out. At least, you know. That when the major final comes around or major semis, he's still going to play as good as he knows how to play and not really think about the circumstances. I think I think That's the question nice the question that I think Ima is going to have to answer in the next few months leading up into the next major is how much time can he buy himself? Like if if it gets to the next post major cycle and there's like a star rifler who's been performing well and shown that he's consistent and shown that he understands the you know the game. If Navi has an opportunity to go out and pick someone up in his place, do I mean, they do it or does he buy himself enough time? Back. Yeah. Simple coming back is also a reality, like for yeah. for for him or wonderful, right? Whoever is, is not doing the best. I think those are the two players that make the most sense to be sure. to be cut. So and we all know simple can rifle, right? Like so he doesn't have to beat the Opa. I I with the Guardian thing, it didn't age too well. But I remember back then when the, I was like, Simple doesn't have to all like he doesn't need to but be I the think Opa. He you know, it might work a little bit better if he's, if he's, you know, I think the guardian thing was also, he was watching like an, an opera at like the tail end of his career, yeah, in obvious right in decline him. from what his peak was. Yeah, exactly. As well as he was did, like, yeah. I gave up opping. So this motherfucker, like what? <laughs> like, no, that's yeah. not, I mean, was, he did yeah, the same was... thing in liquid. Remember with Kusta when he joined yeah. my yes. boy Kusta, he did the same exact thing. And I Long think it was a very Kusta. similar sentiment with, with guardian. So I think if he comes back and he's got someone like wonderful where he actually sees and respects the potential, um, hypothetically speaking, um, the reason why then, all these players off is because they have to. Like if you like uh, Zaiwu didn't want to op. He tried to stop when Nevera joined the team. He didn't op on Inferno. He didn't op on a few maps. He still barely ops. He's just so amazing at everything that you don't even notice because yeah. he gets all the few shots that he takes. And then Simple tried to quit the op a few times. That was horrible. He had to watch his team lose when he knows that if he opt, they probably would have had a better chance of winning. And then even Device, he was like when Fetish was on the team with Device, Device was just a star rifler. He, he just only because he was the yeah. best with the weapon. He was just, that's how it always goes. That's why Device is the CS goat. Yeah, they all, I mean, they all ended up, they're all just the best players on the team, best with every weapon, most important weapons, the op, they all op. Yeah, kind of makes sense, connecting the dots right there. All right, uh, let's do this, Prof. Is Brolin, not is, has Brolin done enough to get himself a spot on Mouse? I don't have the stats. I can just, like, see from what I watched in the games. I think... You just, you just be based. I think he really... Uh, he played much better than anyone gave him credit or expected from him, except me. 
because I'm a Bruin. Okay. Dude. Not okay. not really. I'm not gonna go that far. Like I also have been really disappointed in what we saw of him, but people have really convinced me that he was only ever good with like the Og and Krieg, which is not true. And he is better than what he's shown on Nip and like and the fanatic, whatever. And um I think what he showed in Mouse is like he is still a relevant player and can be, you know, on a on a decent team. Is he like candidate for phase right now? Definitely not. But if he stayed on on Mouse, could be could be okay. I don't think they should stick with that. I think there is like exciting more exciting options on the market right now that they can get that they should go for. Uh, name some names, Prof. Who do you think? JKS. You got any others? Uh, I mean, Nurse was one, but that didn't. Uh, Obviously, it didn't happen. Those are the two first that come to mind for me. But how about this? JKS is buyout dependent. Hmm. Or are they going to keep him on the bench forever? Like, it's in their interest to move on as right. well. G2 look like they're selling a lot of stuff right now. So I guess they need to make as much money let's as they say, can now. Let's say Brolet actually had potential, right? Let's say it's real. <laughs> Best, no, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Wait, hold on. Let me get that. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, tell you. Let me get that. All, All right. right. So he actually has potential. I do, I do I'm living in that world. He's still super I do think he does. That's what I meant. He's only 21. He's 21 years old. Yep. He has never played with a great IGL. Never. <laughs> Sweden had none. Hampus was the best, but he he didn't even have any idols. He, he literally flush, taught know. himself everything. What's that? He played the flush, I know. I, yeah, but he's not like he played with great Pronax. IGL. Flush is one of the greatest players of all time, but not a, a great IGL. I'm logging that one up to some dry humor. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, all right. okay who's the great IGL, that, he's played, with? Who's the great Sweden, IGL that so. he's played with? Let's start there. I don't know. Okay, so he's never played with a great IGL. Shui's the best IGL that he's played with. All right, so this is a cool oh. test, in my opinion, for Shui. Okay. Shui is getting a new player on the team. Can he make Brolin play to the level that everyone thought that Brolin could for the last few years? Because I think that a great IGL can make a great player oh, play. People well. say we all play with that, Alexi. Right? Uh, another thing for you, Chad, you said uh, JK has, has a huge buyout. Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't mean, say Brolin has a huge buyout. I just said it depends on the buyout. Yeah, but Brolin isn't free either. Like yeah, I've but... heard huge fuck numbers for him and Hampus really? being asked for by NIP. I don't know if that changes wow. because that was no, kind no of surprise a, there. That was kind of a thing that was rumored but... around the time when like the Swedish lineup was potential. You know, blah blah. Uh, oh, then well, sorry, it... one more thing. I'll just say Alexi. Uh, Alexi Shui is better now than Alexi was. Okay, I'll say that. At the time, yeah. Okay, all right, all right. Because a lot of people were saying Alexi, he's defending himself here, prof. All right, so a lot of a uh, uh, high buyouts just for Hampus if, yeah, and Brolin. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know if that's um, a thing that works out, right? It seems like whoever it is is gonna be have to be some sort of a buyout, right? Um, okay, yeah. So... But if you're gonna buy buy out the player, would you rather buy out Brolin or JKS? I'd probably lean toward JKS, but uh, again. Well, how far away do Mouse feel like they're from winning, I suppose? Right? Like, if they think that they can win now, then I would say get JKS. If they feel like they want a bit more time to develop, then I'd say go with Brolin. Because he's going to be a better fit for the team. He's more around the age of everybody Man, being 21. This team, I feel like this team already spent their year in development, right? Like, this was like the academy. This, this has been like an academy team for two years. They just won Pro League right at the end of CSGO. And it's like, it felt like that should be like the moment, right? That should be... That yeah, should be the one. The yeah, Jimmy taken pop up out him. of nowhere. You guys shoot it. Yeah, I know, but like that's if you revived. Torgy revived is revive huge. I mean, if I'm if I'm Mal's, I'm basically just going to Shuhi and I'm saying, who do you want, bro? Well, yeah, well, they probably will go that way, right? You yeah. but that's the thing as well. Like we always know Mal's is not this org that's like a massive spender. I'm sure they have some money to throw around, but uh, I, I I'm surprised I guess they're not just getting an academy. People player. are saying uh, well, I guess Jim... you have to Yeah, go yeah, on. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I just zoned out. No, I was going to say, I guess it depends on like, it's kind of in the vein of Chad, where it's like, do you, are you in win now mode or you are in like win, win in the future mode and de develop Roland a little bit longer, but also like, are you trying to replace frozen or are you trying to, you know, fit what you feel the team team needs? Cause like, you know, frozen and JKS are two very different players. Yeah. In people terms are also of style. saying like Jim Pat and JKS have overlap, but like Jim Pat did play star roles in the Academy team and then got into the main team uh, and he's trying to handle his business and then but, he can just go back to star roles but just think about like mirage for example jimmy plays b jks was playing a 
Yes. And then you'd have your, I'm talking about CT side, and then you'd probably have like Shui, the probably connector, you'd have exertion short, and you'd have Torji window, right? Like that That works. That works, right? If we're worrying more about T sides in terms of like lurks and positions like that, uh, I'd be interested that you have two extremity players. Your pack would probably still be what exertion, Shui, and Torji. Yeah. Like that would yeah. still be your pack. So I don't know. I think yeah, so. Yeah. I think it's closer to Frozen than Brolin is for sure. Yeah. Yeah, whereas like Brolin is more aggressive of a player. Like when we had Shui on the show, he was talking about maybe being able to play some more fast Counter Strike, which I think you know definitely has its merit. Um, but I, I just I think if you're going by what most people have as kind of the blueprint at the moment, JKS would make more sense. But I think that they have a lot of good young players in that team that could do a lot of things. I think Exertion is a great player. I really I I, I don't I think do he too. always shows it. I just about well, from the glimpses and the way he talks about the game, I think he's a fantastic player. So. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what's going to happen with Mouse, but um, if if JKS can get over there, that'd be great. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. I I really, really don't know what's going to happen with poor little Justin. Um, so we'll we'll see what happens with the kid. But um, yeah, like I said, I better not talk about it because you know wouldn't want to talk about my my friend, guys. That makes me PR agent and all that kind of good stuff. I think he should so. just wait, basically, because he's got like, like yeah, I think a lot of roster moves as a player you're probably thinking like well let's try not to blow my stock and just wait for someone it's like at least a lateral move if not an upgrade and then if i have to work on making a team better to get past where my team was previously right why would you waste time otherwise yeah you wouldn't so, want to pull a glaive either yeah going too fast can be he took a bit he took quite a break though maybe it was just awkward timing you know yeah. there's a lot going on all the time uh, um, uh. There is a lot going on all the time. All now, the look, time, gentlemen. I have. Uh, we got to do skinnier this evening. Do you guys want to get in a bit of a quiz here? You guys want to? Uh, you guys get to work together on this one here. All right, let's yes. do this, Dimitri. Are you ready? Last two brain be... cells, me and Moses, yeah. right here. Yep. All right. Well, I will say that the last question of the five is very hard, so you will probably not get all five correct. Uh, but let's do this. We got who wants to be a skinny unit brought to you by Trader.gg. Launders and Moses in the hot seat, ready and raring to go. Five questions, multiple choice. Each question you get correct moves the arrow up, and we get closer and closer to potentially giving away a fifty dollars wrong, voucher. Wrong, one wrong answer is uh, is is we're done. No, no, you're not done. We just stalled out. You know, you just okay. you just can't achieve the fifty dollars. And someone gotcha. at home will get a uh, we get a voucher. Type trade it in chat right now for your chance to enter the raffle. Whatever these two lovely gentlemen win, you at home may very lucky get that coming your way. All right. Question numero uno. Let's get this shit going. The first tier one, the first tier one LAN CS2 event was EPL season 18, IEM Sydney or CAC. Did it. Take it away. You got it? Locking in B, Sydney. Lock in B. Correct answer right. is? Your money is safe with me, guys. Right. B, I am Sydney. Bang. Bang. Nice easy one out of the gate there. Couldn't get that one wrong, could we? The tier, All right. The tier one land was throwing me off. I don't know if CSE counted as a as a tier one, you know? I, just, I, yeah. I think there's going to be trick questions in this. No, um, it's only the end. The end is really hard. The rest okay. of it should be pretty straightforward. Don't believe him at all. It, the end, I'm telling you, is fucked. You're not going to get it. All right, question number two. Which team wasn't top eight at the Paris Major this year? Navi, Liquid, or Monty? Liquid. Um... Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see. You're you're responsible for anything that happens now. So. Yeah. Let's lock it lock in. Lock it in, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this taking so long? <laughs> they want to make sure I got an answer in. I I think maybe I fucked up. Maybe I didn't. No. Maybe maybe I, didn't. I, they fucked up. Did I? Did well, am I right, Prof? Did I not mess up the questions here? Liquid, liquid lost in the quarterfinals. They okay, were thank in God. The top eight thank God. I, Jason answered with such, such conviction. I, I thought did. I did. I, I was, was so wrong. confident in that one. Oh. <laughs> wait, wait. Okay. The cool. really? yeah, correct answer was Navi. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Navi I, lost oh, that's the right. I casted that elimination game too. <laughs> 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 I, I wanted to give you one, but I was oh, like, what shit. I felt like a deer in the headlights there that, because Jason just that, answered. Lauders, like, Lauders, so speak up, dog. I was you're so just, confident. You're so <laughs> alpha, bro. I was really like, wow. You have knowledge oh I don't know. Listen, chat, uh, let's blame that one on Launders altogether. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got uh, one from two. So uh, we've got 50% of the answers correct. Let's move into question number three. <laughs> uh, oh, who God. made the most prize money this year? 
Was it A, Vitality, B, Phase, or C, G2? Oh, shit, dude. Uh, Keto Cologne, how much is that worth? If Vitality, what a major? Gamers 8, hey, gamers final, 8. World Final, dude, World Final. It's gotta bad. be Vitality, it's right? Vitality, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> I am, I am, because he's not, so. Okay, yeah. uh, we will lock in uh, A, Vitality. It's not, it's Phase, dude? Is the correct it? answer is B, Phase? No! Oh, my lord. Do you remember Sydney... Grand Slam? Oh, but well, that doesn't count as prize money. Yeah, it does. No, what, do you, what is it? What do you what think it is? But that's, that's charity. Uh, bonuses. That's separate to We're prize calling, money. We're counting all bonuses. Oh, no. What about private The Grand bonuses? Slam is for sure a different category than prize money. What about what about one hundred percent a different category than prize money? Yeah, also, they won a Put fucking the grand chat. slam from three years ago. That doesn't even shouldn't even count now. <laughs> the longest <laughs> grand slam in history. It's not even impressive for that reason. So. The, the hardest question is still to come. All right, the next two should be okay. Let's go. Question number four. Oh, this is great. S attack stood in for who during the blast spring groups? A rain, B hampers, C Tessus. It'd be it'd be Hampus, wouldn't it? Sorry, I don't trust I don't trust anything that. anymore. I don't trust anything anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's the, literally Nip is the only team that it could have been. So yeah, it was Hampus. I don't trust anything. You guys we're, are gonna lock in V Hampus. Yeah, V Hampus. All right, locking in V Hampus. It's gonna be Rick someone else. Is A Rain? <laughs> oh yeah, it was Hampus during oh. the Paul groups, wasn't it? It was Paul groups. Was Hampus. Dude, that's so God, he's an intro fragger. Oh, Tag stood in for rain while he was having his baby at the start of the year. Wait, what's oh, the chances shit. that we can still get to 50? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can get to whatever that is, 12.5? Is it 250? 250. 250. 250. Yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all grainy on the monitor when I maximize. So I think that's, maybe that's, that's, that's why the question are getting wrong here. I can't even read the question. It's all grainy. <laughs> all right, all right. Fifth and final question here for this evening of who wants to be a skin, you know, brought up to you by trader.gg. How many different players competed under the Vitality banner in 2023? Eight. Was it seven, eight, or nine? I'm not answering. Okay, I'm not answering. It, it's, <laughs> they replaced, they replaced, Flames and Mezier are the only two players that they brought in this year, right? I'm fucking scared right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait. They're There's gonna count coaches as players. Point. You're counting grand slams no, as no, prize count, money. They no, coaches no, are players. No counting coaches. Wait, no. wait. Didn't didn't Jack stand in for an event for Vitality this year? Oh my God, did he? I think he did. I don't even remember that. Oh, oh, I do remember that. Was that? What was that? I don't remember what event that was. Okay, yeah, let's go eight. Are you sure you want to lock in B eight? Are there any other stand-ins? Could it be nine? Phone a friend. Let's go eight. I don't know. My memory is not what it used to be, as you can tell. Two players in a stand-in. All right, we're locking in B8, and the correct answer is nine. <laughs> oh, no, dude, no way. During a GG bet show match, uh, oh, Simple... Oh, come on, show the... match. Oh, Simple no. and Cyrus For competed me. under the Vitality banner <laughs> in a yeah, show they match. Did. They did. Look, I'll link it. I'll fucking, I'll fucking Why'd you link write it? banner to make I'll it sound put, like important I, games I can't only. put it. In, I can't put it in Twitch chat because I'm not logged in, but here it is. There, that's it in TeamSpeak. So the players who played for Vitality this year were Apex, Zywoo, Sphinx, Flamesy, Magus, Dupree, Jax, Mezzi, and Simple for one map. So um, that's, that's Fuck it. Fuck you, we Jason. You <laughs> <laughs> set this off on such a bad trajectory. We started out so well. We did. We did start off really good. And I'd like to say congratulations to official Raz. That is uh, official R A S. Uh, you are the winner of a fifty cent skin. Um, our people will reach out to your people, and it will. <laughs> don't, sorry, Raz. Don't, don't spend that. Don't spend that whole thing in one place. Maybe get two skins with that. Yeah. Uh, don't report. Don't report that skin. Oh, that was a fun little trip down memory lane then. Either this is hundred percent. This is by far the worst performance. Wait, I'm still, I'm still gonna plant my flag that the IGS is not prize money. I just want to throw that out there. That's Thank you. Yeah, that's a debate yeah. that you guys can have at another time. Uh, I'll die on that hill. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, <sighs> that was great. Okay, that was really good. Thank you guys. I appreciate that. Ooh. Thank you, Trader.gg, for making that all possible.
And uh, the point of that was to be a segue into just us reflecting on the year, gentlemen. Um, it's a bit like Counter-Strike Thanksgiving now. The season's wrapped up. We've had another another nice year. Lots has, lots has happened. Uh, I was wanted to wonder if you guys had any any favorite moments, like personally or, or tournament-wise, anything that blew your socks off, anything that you were really disappointed by that happened within the year. Does anybody want to start? Anybody got anything at the tip of their tongue? Uh, I would say, uh, like a. Personal... I know what you're gonna say. What am I gonna say? If you don't Why... say, well, I think you're gonna say what I'm gonna say. Write it down in TeamSpeak, and, and we'll check after the fact. I was going to say a, a personal a personal favorite of mine um, was actually uh, going going to the Fraga Cago event just recently. Like the the oh. going back to like the old school land style. It's not a it's not a big one. I'm just getting I'm just getting us warmed up, Chad. I'm just taking okay. the first step down the road, getting everyone into it. All right. Uh, just uh, getting the old school like land environment vibes going on. Rows of tables, six matches at a time. Motherfuckers yelling across the room, shit talk when they win a clutch. Um, mm. that was good. That was really good. And I mean, to piggyback on that too, is having events with the players facing each other again, this year happened a couple times that we don't normally get, which I think was, was actually really, really cool to see the players interact during live matches as well. Um, I think that's a factor, a facet of, of tournaments that should, that should be here to stay. Yep. No, that's all right. Okay. A couple of nice ones. I thought you were going to say going to Atlanta and not Atlanta, going to Seattle and testing the game. <laughs> oh yeah that was a pretty good oh, yeah. moment as well <laughs> yeah i enjoyed that too that was cool that was like christmas that was like all of my was christmas, second christmas coming at once right yeah. that was that was amazing like just to get the kind of emails coming from them and stuff and then obviously we had to sign the nda and we didn't know who was going and we rock up and you're seeing all these different people there and just getting to see the offers i never thought i never thought i would have that opportunity um so that that yeah. for me that is the biggest and best uh oh. thing within the year without a doubt I've got, let me, let me just plug something CS related for next year, the beginning of next year before I say mine. So mm -hmm. I would do organizing a local land with rivalry. So in, in Toronto, if you're in Toronto, it's a $5,000 local January 6th at the Red Bull gaming studio. And you can sign up my links on my Twitter. If you're in Toronto, BYOC old school, five grand, Jason just reminded me of that. And uh, I'll be there. And if you're, you want to cast, we well, can all cast together. There's going to be Mike's casting uh, room and setup and everything like that. And it's, uh, tickets are limited so if you're in toronto come to that and, and if you my... need a team hit me up if you need a fifth yeah yeah yeah. moses will play with you and um my favorite thing in that same vein is that we did watch parties earlier this year and that was so cool to like see to do an event in toronto that's like 200 people come to watch we watched iem rio together that's really the, cool. the, the the grand finals and you know it's like 200 250 people came the bar was oversold and we did it two times and uh doing watch parties reminds you of all the good things that we love about the game just like jason's saying going to a LAN, seeing people who are they're just like they're playing more meeting, of a community vibe right love. Yeah. exactly there's some tourists at bigger events you know what i mean so you can't yeah. always know when people come up and they say i'm a big fan of yours or they love counter-strike you know tourists are totally fine but it's cool to kind of get to like the really core fans uh in situations like that like local lands and watch parties so that you know reminded me about everything i love about the game huh. and then uh obviously casted the major final which is a bucket list and that, that was an, an incredible experience as well um so yeah that was the two coolest things and then also just every year going to new countries is like my favorite thing like going to new places um to do cs events is like like this this year at the end of the year we were following along with f1 basically because we were in vegas for the esports awards and then we went to abu dhabi and both times there was like the week before was like a race for F1. And I just realized like, wow, we actually like travel more than these guys. Like it's pretty amazing mm -hmm. how many places that we get to see every year. And you're not jaded by the travel yet. You're still enjoying it. I still love it. I, I'm just, I'm just an explorer, like inside, like I will go, I would literally do an event in North Korea if they had one. I I will go anywhere, dude. I, it's I a love, bombshells on the show. <laughs> I, 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 love, I love I love I love just exploring like all my all the YouTube videos I watch, like some dude the Taliban in Afghanistan, like hanging out with them, or like I just watched uh, Bald go to do the Darien Cross uh, on the you know to try to sneak into the U.S. and he went with these people to do, and I, it's just like I love uh, just seeing new places, meeting new people, especially if they don't speak English, especially if like everything's totally foreign. I want to eat their food, hang out with their families, talk to them. Like, I, I just love it. So this is like the perfect job for me personally. I just love the traveling. And if I go to the same places over and over again, oh, it loses the novelty. But to go mm. to new places every year, I feel like it's the biggest blessing.
Yeah, okay. That's a nice way to look at it. What about you, Prof? You got anything that stuck out for you this year? Um, I think the the show we did in Paris was really cool. Uh, yeah, I think that yeah, was yeah. like our best live show yet. We had like a great team there and, uh, and of the, their production and then our stuff that we prepared for the show, like the nice screen, the setup. Launders came in for a bit. I think it was also what you're saying about like the watch parties. I think that's kind of true also for, for these podcasts. Like we don't sell that many tickets mostly because the the venues are really limit limited so it's only the people that are literally waiting for it to drop to get tickets so everyone that's there wants to be there doesn't have it like they're not there just ah, i'm gonna watch a bit and then just like zone out everyone's just like interacting we did these little the papers so we had some like interactivity and stuff like that so mm -hmm. i think it was a a really cool vibe there so I, if we can do more shows like that that would be kind of kind of it just felt like a real talk show, you know. It really felt like a proper it was. TV show. So that's uh, it. Just shows that we can do good stuff in CS. Yeah, well, that's obviously one of the things we've been doing a bit more the last couple of years. And you're the a big proponent of making those things possible, right? Same with this award show. You I don't know, even know how we started that, to be honest. Yeah, they're, they're we, good fun. Yeah, well, but that's that's good. And then the award show, of course, like I think that's up there. Uh, oh, to just start the, the, the first year, right? one to start the award show is yeah. cool. Yeah, that that was pretty sick. And I think uh, had we had no idea what it was going to look like. Like, obviously, you can do you can make everything the best. But if people don't show up and if they don't really give anything, you know, if they just come and say thank you, take the word and go and leave, it would be like kind of shit. Right. But everyone came up, I think, when Axel was the first guy that like came up and he was like had a whole fucking speech. I'm like, this guy didn't speak this much ever. I didn't mm -hmm. ever see him speak this much. And he's like in front of an audience that usually kind of makes people kind of sh shrink and just be like ah please let me leave me alone uh so that was that was insane that was really nice and then obviously we're going to do it again this year i think those two things combined with working the major that was kind of a lucky thing that happened um and it was amazing amazing experience not something that i would have expected to ever do so that's cool it's really like a it's an award show that launders can actually win okay that's Jesus. crazy yeah, <laughs> Jason, just throwing. Yeah. I know, You're you, the one who the traded John GG giveaway <laughs> thing. Okay, not me. I was waiting to get that one out there. Prop just kept going and going. I was, I was loaded up. I was ready. Bloody hell! Yeah, look, there, there's been a lot of fun things throughout the year. I'm just trying to reflect, like in event wise. I think Sydney was fun. Like it being get casting with Henry as well with with me and Alex. Something we did a lot during the the online era. Uh, we get a lot of comments from people. um that we, you know, either via, I get a lot from Instagram, but people, you know, you know, it was great watching you guys during the online era with all that, with obviously the pandemic stuff. And then the fact we got to do that was kind of nice to do that TriCast. The Cash Show match is always a lot of fun because we get to just be fools and do a little, a little bit of like WWE style shtick. So that's always good fun. But yeah, it's an, it, the year went by pretty quickly, I think. Another one that's just kind of, this year's been a weird year for Counter-Strike, obviously with CS2 coming out and only having one major in the year and just coming out of the, pan well, just, we're coming out of the pandemic not that long ago and then we've had all this roster stuff i think a big influence of that was falcons coming into the space and this latter half of the year has just kind of also been a bit CS2. murky and messy yeah the cs2 swap over has created a lot of chaos there's a there's a few months in there that it felt like we were all just kind of in limbo and so those those went by really quick i feel yeah i think we're still kind of in limbo though that's that's the thing we're in the next year we're going to kind of just be wobbling into place and then as the year closes in 2025 that's when i think we'll find ourselves in a good spot with the major being the final event of the year and we might go to because come 2026 uh, sorry come 2020 next is only 2024 fucking hell, i just lost a year uh come 2025 that's when we have you know the majors the last events before the player breaks or the tournament break so that's when we kind of get Finally. into what we've wanted for probably the better part of the last decade um so that that should be good fun um i can think the first pro league season i really enjoyed the second one i don't think i enjoyed as much hopefully we can keep a few fingers out of a few pies for the next pro league season that we do jason we'll see if we can you know hopefully what, is, what does that mean what does that saying mean it means it we just, like our pie i mean yeah we we like uh, the our pie like, our way like fingered no we'll finger we'll finger our own pies we like to, we like fingering uh, our own pies i know just, exactly how i like to finger my pies exactly and we want to finger them our way that's yeah. that's all prof we don't want them to be fingered any other way What's your um, favorite pie? I call lemon pie. Um, in Australia, we have more savory pies. I like a good chunky beef pie. Sure, that's not bad. I, yeah. I enjoy. I'm I'm American. I enjoy apple pie. Okay. What about pecan? Pecan is pretty good. Hard to find a good pecan pie though. The blueberry crumble is is also nice. It's a good it's a good switch up. 
What's the pie of Canada, Launders? Is there a, is there a, a favorite pie in Canada? Maple syrup pie. Pumpkin, maybe. I don't know exactly if there's a favorite. I like pumpkin though. Okay, all right. Pumpkin's well, a solid pie. Everyone, oh, lemon meringue pie coming in here from Connor. We love a bit of that. that no, one, no one likes lemon meringue pie. No, it's it's yeah, the, it's it. the million dollar baby reference, and I was like, but he hadn't, he hasn't seen the movie. Oh, we literally had this conversation. I was there. Oh right, yeah. Because you said this, and now it's like yes, but it's the best actually. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, look, gentlemen, just quickly here. For I'm going to read through a couple of bits and bobs because I tried to do some crowdsourcing with some tweets over the last couple of weeks to get some people okay. to tweet in, and a lot of it's just like flooded with recency bias, uh, which which does tend to happen. Um, I was asking for just like people, the the community, like people on Twitter, like the moments they enjoyed or didn't enjoy, or whatever. And this, I'll just read a couple here. Uh, Decadent said, "Least favorite moment: the ultimate downfall of Swedish CS." Do we think this year was the death knock for for Swedish Counter Strike? Is it fucking yeah, done though now? This it is like is. one of the best years in some recent memory for Swedish CS, isn't it? I, in terms of an NIP giving up, it is. But then also, like at the same time, the sub top, as the French like to call it, has been better than ever. Actually, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah true. It that there's like it's thriving more, so we got to burn it down before we can really the, start to grow again. True. Like Snip Murray, Sweden has been on a down climb since Rez was MVP at uh, Oakland in 2017. That was like the best. <laughs> then it's just literally, literally, it's never gotten better since then. And then uh device gave it some hope, you know, even the, like an import, but we'll at least JW can win a tournament this year and say I'm the best Swedish talent or we're the best Swedish team. That's pretty cool, I think. So most trophies of any Swede, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what else we got here? We got uh one obviously the heroic Astralis drama being the highlight of the year. That was pretty juicy. Uh that was that that would have to be one of the top dramas of the year. The and and a great nickname being spawned from that. So that was a nice one. I did enjoy that one. Were, were there any other dramas that stood out to people in terms of, and I don't know if we can talk about them as highlights of the year, but were there any other like juicy little, because it's hard when you try and reflect back on the year to remember all of them because there's usually so many. Does any, anyone remember anything fun like that? That was like, I think G2 was a pretty like, what the hell happened? Uh, I guess EG leaving esports sort of? I mean, there's a bunch of EG stuff. Was EG... Yeah. Complaining about the t talent being mean this year. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, we had to stop Shit. doing the jokes on broadcast. That was this year. Oh, yeah, my yeah. That was oh, the first season. God. Yeah, okay. that, that was the, funny. That, that was, was the funny. first season of Sam. That was a good segment. That was good. That was a great we, segment. We Blast asked, major trophy. Yeah. Yeah, they got really upset. They were like, "Oh, you're gonna stop doing it. People are gonna lose their jobs." And then now the org's going under, which is oh, they lost their jobs. Hilarious. Was it because of you? I hope yeah, so. Apparently, I hope oh. it was because of the joke. Oh, yeah. there was the you are all shitting on them thing that happened just recently. That was a hilarious. Didn't too. you work that into a cast? The other I did day? because it just sort of jumped out and I said that. <laughs> and then I was like, probably shouldn't, but too funny. It was too funny. Oh, someone's brought up the Jay Cranny situation, the the swish us down scenario. That was uh, that was first <laughs> season of, of Pro League, Christ. I think, as well. Yeah. Uh, that's that's not bad. Someone's brought that one up into the uh, into the fray here. They've got Mali versus Snaffany, which is pretty good. That's, <laughs> that has to be copy pasta of the year, though, don't they? Doesn't it? Yeah, that right, right that is, that's a good copy pasta. Yeah, that one has to be up there. Um, that's a new award for the fucking show, copy pasta of the year. Yeah, for sure. Mm. It needs to be. It one hundred percent needs to be. Um, people are bringing up the Blair Hedger thing. That was that was interesting. Um, Okay, what else we got here? That's oh, it. That, building that's the top it. pipeline. Yeah, <laughs> it's getting I don't, keep, I don't keep I don't keep drama in my memory. I delete that. I only have so much space, and I don't want it to be. It's fun. Drama. It's fun temporarily. We all yeah. like I don't. I don't know what is in there. Stretching on the on the skin area. He doesn't have space for drama. Thing. No space for trivia. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he's right hey, look, I don't. i'll be honest i don't <laughs> he's got dad brain right he's allowed that like once you're a dad that is true you're that allowed true. you're off the hook mate you're off the i hook. have there was there was at the paris major there was a sequence of like three days where i just like lost shit in the caster room and i would be like chad uh if you see this like i don't know where anything is <laughs> if you, yeah, if you like, find this i think i left my watch at your house I'm like yeah i got it it's all good we got <laughs> it don't you worry about can't that. find it anywhere <laughs> 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 It's fucking. It was wild times. It was Someone, a Banks hot mic. It was just put in chat. That was fun. Yeah, they didn't remember drama. Um, <laughs> it was in chat. <laughs> <laughs> Simple stepping down is kind of a big deal. Um, that is Kassad versus Hooksy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That was a big one too. 
that was funny i was i was watching i was, was watching yeah, yeah i love that <laughs> dude uh, the death segment was great oh yeah. when Kassad I, I, the desk right, together. right after he won cologne going onto the desk with Kassad. Ooh. yeah 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 uh, some good stuff there oh yeah Pasha oh. biked to paris from poland which was like a multi-day journey right that's right yeah in yeah, order yeah. to catch it was so sad because it was in order to catch nine playing yeah if they survived through this <laughs> cal legends stage was it legends yeah they legends. Eliminated, he yeah. arrived the and day they after they got eliminated, got eliminated. Yeah, the day after they got eliminated but i was talking to shuhei and I was like, yo, did Pasha reach out to you? He's like, no. Oh. I, was like, dude. I was like, dude, you didn't even know that Shuhei was there getting to the major final. He was doing it for you too, Pasha. But you didn't know. Yeah, you were there but... for nine. Shuhei was there the whole time. The Maui Zawi cultural impact. I don't because Zawi doesn't play back into any of that. It's Apex who cares more about that than I think he Zawi doesn't even does, have so. Zaiwu doesn't have social media. He doesn't know what the fuck. Yo, Zaiwu's like, got a little bit of swagger though to him these days. He's starting to he's starting to get it. He's starting to get his own style. It's not going to be like the ego, the outspoken that we all wanted, but he's he's got his own little swagger in interviews these days. Okay. Yeah. All right. He's um, coming for Simple's records, bro. Like the MVPs. Yeah. It's within reach. He's one behind Device now and three behind Simple in terms of MVPs. I think. Yeah. Well, that's not bad. We're starting to look forward to next year. We were going to look at the Katowice spots and the RMR stuff, but me and Prof and Striker can do that in the next episode we're going to we do, can. which will be after Christmas. We'll probably do that around the 27th or the 28th. That'll give us a bit of news to do, and we might make a bit of a more personal episode there. But uh, yeah, gentlemen, you got anything else you really want to get off your chest here this evening? Anything that's been bothering you before uh, we go into <sighs> to, uh, the Christmas time just around the corner, all of what, six days away to Christmas Day? Or if you're in Europe, you guys do it on the 24th because you guys are fucking weird. I do it on the 25th, so fuck off. Okay. Well, you're not weird then. The Germans do it on the 24th. Yeah, that's their like, problem. O- opening gifts like at night? Yeah. On the 20- yeah. Do it after midnight. Do it after midnight. It, no, no, no. 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 What? This, now, what happens is, so in Germany, I don't know how many other countries this is the case. What happens, and if you get little kids listening right now, I'm sorry. I don't know why they're listening to four fucking dudes talk about counter strike and swear their heads off. Pussy. So they, they lock and pussy. They lock the kids in like a bedroom and then Santa comes in. So someone gets dressed the fuck up as Santa and then he puts the gifts under the tree at nighttime on the 24th and then Santa leaves. Uh, and then the kids come out and open the presents at night time on the 24th. That's weird. Yeah, tell yeah, me about cool. it. <laughs> that's that's unique. Yeah. I haven't I haven't really heard that before. Yeah, that's that's true though. That's what happens. That's that's what happens in Germany, apparently. Unless I'm getting lied to over here. But yeah, that's that's what the case is. So and the Navy as well, yeah. The Dutch put carrots in uh, their shoes and leave them outside the door for the reindeer. Okay. Better in the shoe than Why in somewhere the else. I don't know. I didn't so ask that question. They're, they're standing up so they can see them. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, get a good good angle on the bite. Sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's go with that. You know what my parents used to do? Uh, that, someone said that's not true. I'm sorry. I guess I got it wrong. I've been I've been misinformed. Um, what my parents used to do because in Australia, obviously, we don't have any snow at, at Christmas time because it's normally about 35 degrees outside. They'd put like talcum powder like outside on like the where the where the water and stuff would be left for the reindeer as if they had been able like the snow had stayed like it was meant to be fake snow so okay would, of mm. course that's not fucking snow how could it be snow it's 35 really degrees outside. Outside. i just reindeer. use cocaine <laughs> yeah well that hey look that that might be cheaper where you're from Lawrence. i don't know how much it <laughs> knows it knows that shit ain't going cheap uh well there was a question here that prof wanted uh to ask Someone in chat wanted uh, to ask that he put in for later. They said, can Moses and Launders talk about the future The future of casting? Just talk about the future casting? Well, okay. That, oh, yeah, that's we'd like the... to announce ourselves as a duo. Anything else? Yeah. <laughs> and we'll obviously be really well prepared with all trivia information across an entire calendar year. Yeah. I also love the extension of the question. What happened to Henry and Hugo? Yeah. Disappeared. That's so funny. Seems like Harry. Henry G. Henry and, and Hugo? Is... Yes. What happened Henry to Hugo? Yeah. So, Obviously, sorry, Harry. what's the question? What happened to Henry and Hugo? He meant what happened to Harry and Hugo, right? This has been mis- miswritten. The guy obviously... It's usually Hugo who's just, mistaken exactly. for Henry as well. So it's, yeah. it's got layers to it. So, so they Wait, disappeared near the end of... Well, they just haven't worked in like three months. 
Um, okay. d- disappear, uh, disappeared near the end of the year. Seems like Henry G and Anders uh, are ready for next year. So that's such an interesting question that you pasted there, Prof. Um, it's it's a question. It's multifaceted. It's it's multi. What do you think? There. Can you give one uh, talent based uh, prediction for next year? Talent based prediction for next year, starting with you, Chad. Talent based prediction. For- hmm. Do you expect any changes within the people casting? Yeah. I don't think so. Probably not for next year. I've got about three years left in me. So. I can announce that I'm, I'm, I have a duo. I'm How many years do you have less Moses? Oh, I got, I got plenty, dog. I got, I got plenty in the tank. I'm really? ready to go. If I make it through three, mate, I'll have done well. You can do it. Okay, now. You're going you to make reckon? it through three. Yeah. You're not nearly as unstable as you like to pretend you are. Ah, we get an yeah. event in North Korea. That's when I'll retire. <laughs> <laughs> because he won't be coming back so. fuck it <laughs> done I'll have no motivation after that did it all <laughs> fuck it out fuck it out <laughs> all right. base predictions uh, no not really probably be okay. a no we have a good crew right now there's not even we don't even get blow ups at the majors anymore which used to be like a really fun thing every major had one massive issue and, and we're done with that that used to be a tradition why do you think that is Jason well, we got we got a good level headed crew of of non psychopaths. Everyone's is... getting old and boring. <laughs> no, yeah. but, uh, psychopaths. That's what yeah. you're, I can extract from this. There's too much mental stability within the talent team these days. Oh dear. And on that bombshell, uh, we should probably close it down, gentlemen. Do you want to? So, Launders, if they go to your website, boxer.gg, and uh, they okay. we're changing the site, so now it's boxermovement.club. Okay, boxermovement.club. Sorry. And Much they, better than Boxer. That GG. There's just a password. To, you uh, can just leave your email, and then on the 21st, the site's released. So you don't have to wait for 10 years. Just coming out on the 21st, we're building we're building a new site. So new site, yeah. same great clothes. Be the best dressed movement player on the internet on the 21st. Okay. Boxer Movement Dot Club. Thank you. So I have much. a T-shirt and the and the slides. I got the the, little, the sandals. Tell them about the quality, Jason. Tell them about the quality. It's great. I use I use the sandals when I'm when I'm cooking things on the grill. Just slip them on, walk outside, and you can do everything you want. It's it's they're not those things aren't going to break down ever. Recycled material. It feels like it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds Good wonderful. So, yeah. Jason, are you plugging anything here this evening? Uh, there's a there's a talking counter Discord now. We got 400 people in that Discord <laughs> on my podcast, bro. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Hey man, you take my host him. and I fucking your fucking <laughs> Discord here, like so the guys. Like, I mean, I'm just saying, like you know, support support HLTV confirmed. Continue buying tickets to the live shows, but there's also a talking counter Discord when you're not supporting <laughs> HLTV confirmed. Yeah, I hope in, I'm gonna. I hope you get yes, right HLTV now. There's forum yeah. users and with no Johnny to deal with them. Oh, oh shit! Uh, we should have thought about this. We don't. Oh, fuck! We might need to get Johnny E in our fucking Discord to be the. I moderator. wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna do it, but then I got teed up. You know, I was like, man, that's that's <laughs> that's uncouth. And then it was just the ball was passed to me, and I that wasn't even the plan. I thought maybe you're gonna tell us about like some fucking turkey or steak or some shit you're cooking. I don't know, man. Like uh, anyway, uh, prop. You got anything you're plugging here this evening? Uh, there's a bunch of questions that I answered uh, in chat. I just want to say it again. People are asking about the top 20 countdown. I can uh, confirm that it starts earlier this year. We're starting on December 27th, so we can do one per per day, like okay. we used to do. So okay. Not double, like some. Well, that's nice. So there's a bit more spread on that. That's happening. Uh, next week, you know, in this week, we'll um, put out also the community voting for the community awards that we have, including talent of the year and event of the year and creator and streamer of the year, fully voted by uh, by the populace, which is Sounds really like nice. Sports awards. Uh, no, well, they they do like something in between that no one really knows. This is like 100% clean, just the, just the fans, just the HLTV audience. And uh, that's it. I think that's more or less it. Okay, easy. All right, well, that's been another episode of Hedge TV Confirmed. Thanks to the sponsors, 22Bet. Remember to gamble responsibly, Steel Series, and Trader.gg. Thank you to Dimitri for producing this evening in lieu of Lucas. Thank you to Jason Moses O'Toole and Mohan Launders, I don't know how to say his last name, for coming <laughs> on the show so tonight. <laughs> yeah, me too, actually. Not even going to try. Uh, and yeah, Prof, as always, and uh, we might get Striker back when we do the episode just after Christmas. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, that's been the end of another episode. Good night.
best esports odds. VIP program and a variety of bonuses. Fast and easy withdrawals. Bet on every possible CSGO matching tournament. As well as any other esports game. Only on 22 Bet. Are you tired of your boring old skins and looking for beautiful new ones? Trade.gg is your place to go for easy and secure trades within seconds. Simply pick and choose whatever item you want to trade from Trade.it's huge inventory. Verify the trade on Steam and you're ready. With the lowest fees in the market and a beautiful, easy to use UI, Trade.it also offers you the option to instantly sell your items for cash. We accept a wide variety of payment methods. Trade.gg is the go-to place whenever you want to try out fancy new skins. Start trading today at Trade.it.gg. Is a good vibe, 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 is